comment below with your favorite set that we completely ignored. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a thousand comments right there. Mike. Hi everyone, Joshua Hinland here in the LEGO Archives in Billing, Denmark, and today I'm joined by Kim Thompson, who you probably have seen on the channel over the years in different videos that we've done, and so he's going to join me for a look at LEGO Star Wars over the years, starting from 1999, where we are to right now, all the way to today, and see how the sets developed and changed, maybe got better, that might be one way to say it. It's only an opportunity, yes. So for people who haven't seen you real quick before we start in, just give like a, like what the 10 second overview of your job is here. Oh, I engage with the a community through the Lego Ambassador Network, um, talking mostly to ambassadors for recognized communities. So currently we have around, I think it's 335 recognized communities, representing more than a million fans across the globe. So. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot going on, but that's why you're down in the archives with us today uh, as a fall engagement. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. But you're also a massive Star Wars fan, which is why I wanted you to go on this tour with us. And I believe you actually collected, was it every single Star Wars set for a number of years? Every single Star Wars set from 1999 until 2012, um, excluding a few of the Comic Con exclusives that were simply too expensive to get my hands on. Okay. Yeah, so that's impressive. So John is showing right now, I think this is the very first series of Star Wars right here, correct? Yeah, those are those are the very first. I actually remember walking down the street um, being not an AFL because Star Wars is what brought me back. And I saw um, actually this particular X-Wing fighter in the window. And I was like, wow, this is so beautiful. This is the most amazing Lego set I've seen in years. So I need to get it. So I went in and I bought it. And I bought a few of the other ones, uh, namely the speeder bikes that we have right there, because that's also pretty iconic. Um, and that's basically what, what brought me back. And I've been spending, according to a few people, at least my wife, way too much money on Lego bricks ever since. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, and as you can see, if you compare these to the sets of today, certainly a lot is to say about the, um, the design of now compared to the design of... Uh, 1999. I think a lot of these are for the time that they were designed in and with the brakes available, very good. Well, maybe not the Sith Infiltrator, but most of the other ones were, were pretty pretty much spot on. Um, at a time when Lego products probably weren't at their height uh, by most fan standards. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say so, but you know, the snow speeder is clearly a snow speeder and mm -hmm. it's been made in white later, but for, for a start this was uh, pretty good and this lured in me and quite a lot of other um, men, I guess, my, around my age, back into being Lego fans. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the, the tie-in here would have been that there were new Star Wars movies coming out at this time, right? So that's what had been kind of Lego trying to, to tie in the products with that? Yeah, the, the prequel trilogy kicked off, um, though some Star Wars fans prefer not to talk about the, the prequel. Right? Are you a prequel fan? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so this which, which is actually why I ended up paying a lot of money for, was that... Um, that blue guy's uh, the trashy guy, the one who has the uh, pot racers and everything. Okay. Um, I don't remember his name I, right I now. It'll lose me. Yeah. We'll come to it later, but I ended up paying tons of money on that on the secondhand market because at some point I decided I don't want the the episode one, two, and three sets because they're not they're not original trilogy. Um, and then that ended up being very expensive for me at a later point oh. when I when I had to get them. This is actually one that. I got, and I got it, I think I got it at an extreme sale at some point. And there were like pallets of them sitting, and apparently it didn't sell too well. So I think I gave around $30 for this on sale, which is a fragment of the price. Mm -hmm. um, at the point in time, I did not know that there was a potential aftermarket, so I bought only one. But knowing the prices later, I wish I had bought like 100 of them. I think we've all been there with different sets over the years. <laughs> yes, yes. Ah. Uh, but one thing that I notice here is that uh, I think one, one of the big changes that happened over the years with Star Wars is the, the yellow colored minifigs to, to flesh minifigs. Yeah, they switched at some point, I think. Um, I will hit that at some point, I'm sure, as we go through we here. I, I think that came with, what well, that's, um, oh, I risk saying something that's not entirely true, but I think, it, wasn't it Harry Potter or something that, that, intro right. that introduced mm -hmm. fleshed uh, colors and that kind of spread out across all um, the license themes and they all turn into to flesh minifigures mm -hmm. good stuff so that's a look at the, the first original sets so are there more on this side we were going to try to show 
as much as possible. Oh yeah, so this certainly falls within it. So so this would I guess would would fall within uh, within Star Wars as well. It has the Star Wars logo at least, <laughs> and it's the, the Dark Side development kit. And they did a f we we did a few of these. Um, honestly, I never played with any of them, and um, I only own a few of them, so I don't really know how good or how bad they were. But Technic was definitely involved at some point, um, and so was Mindstorms in the Star Wars franchise. There's uh, a few droids and mm -hmm. C-3PO and stuff you can get in Technic models, Stormtrooper and Darth Vader. Um, and then, of course, you have the Mindstorms kits as well. It's not a particularly good-looking model. Like, just, just kind of the art here looking at that. I feel like it's definitely the emphasis is on the the moving parts and the Mindstorms part of it rather than the aesthetics of the outside. Is that a leading question? <laughs> no, I, I'd say it's... Uh, it's a very open robot skeleton, and I yeah. guess I guess the idea is on the programming, and then adding a little DNA, which clearly indicates that this is uh, the ATAT, -AT, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, that's the, just a good example of how kind of wide ranging Star Wars products have been over the years. Yeah. So that was the year two thousand, and then oh, there's actually there are a few oh, down here as well. Yes. <laughs> what do we got in this secret spot that we haven't looked at? Oh, look at this. The Desert Skiff. A lot. It seems that we've gotten a few of these again at a later point. There's a Flash Speeder. There's the the A Wing Fighter, which I think we've seen a few of. Um, no. <laughs> no. Oh, look at this! Beautiful. There's a B Wing Fighter. That's a real thing. Some more with those. Yeah, that, no. that Trade Feder Federation MTT right there is just so crazy to look at compared to like the, the Star Wars products today or the ones they've made over the years when you look at the colors and all the, the exposed studs and everything. It seems, it seems that this is very much, you know, the classic stacking bricks kind mm -hmm. of uh, way of building. And then as, uh, as fans got better and as designers got better, it seems that the techniques have changed a lot over the years. A lot more sideways build and snot and stuff. Certainly for the better, for sure. So we'll roll this one, and so then we go to 2001 to 2002. This movie we have the best Star Wars product ever, Galidor. That was a spin-off movie that we did. <laughs> Not a lot of Star Wars fans are aware of that, kind of one of the lesser-known films. Exactly. Uh, this is actually the year that we introduce uh, what is later to become uh, UCS. And in the beginning, they were in say neutral colored boxes because they were sold only online through shop at home and in some brand retail stores and therefore um, the box designs were also meant to be very exclusive in how they looked first we get rid of this other stuff and then we have the amazing Darth Maul the one and only and it's not in dark gray and black it's actually in colors but as I said the box is uh, it's very neutral very exclusive in its look and we have, I think this is where we apparently really kicked it off, right? We went from very small sets and then we just... <laughs> You're just like, you know, screw it. Sets. We're just going for it. <laughs> yeah, let's try this out and see if it doesn't work. Like, let's do a Rebel Blockade Runner. This is one of my favorite builds in the Star Wars line. It was so fantastic. Also quite big. Yeah, this box is massive. Just the way it sits there. Certainly when you compare it to other products from this time, it would stand out as yeah. one of the more impressive kits. But wait, there's more, isn't there? <laughs> there should be. Let's see. See, these are, for example, some of those that have that gray color scheme to be exclusive, but also because it's primarily shipped out. Some of the old legend sets. Mm -hmm. So when people complain, why don't you ever re-release something? We did. <laughs> we did. Somebody just sucked the color out of it. <laughs> yeah. So, so now we add on color. We move, we move forward one year, don't we? I guess we do. The shelves are confusing yes, me a bit. Yeah, I think here. 2002 here now. Yeah. So, so added. So this is actually very much in line with the Darth Maul we looked at, but now we've added color to the boxes, and you can get your own Yoda bust and Yoda figure and build, put up at home if you want to be I part of the, the artwork place. on the box with the the movie scenes back here. I just think this is is really well done. Yeah, and you have the Ultimate Collector series. And young Luke. And then this nice small set down here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even there's something underneath it that also says Star Wars. That's the Republic gunship. Oh, that must have been the first iteration of that one, right? Uh oh. 
Don't tell anyone. <laughs> we'll fix it later. <laughs> That's a nice ship. No, that is. Definitely compared to some of these earlier Star Wars models, no, it's not, more impressive. I'm not fully sure that it's from a real Star Wars movie, but what do you know? <laughs> they were able to get away with some of that stuff. So uh, you said you collected all of these sets when they came out. Yes. Uh, what was your thought on some of these, these massive ones, like this giant Star Destroyer that blow your mind when it was that big and that impressive? It did. Like this was, uh, I guess this was very new to quite a lot of us. There you go. There you go. Um, and it's it just, every time they did something, they, because I wasn't part of the Lego group back then, and it just grew bigger every time. You're like, wow, how can they expand on this? How can they add on this? Because now they've given us everything. And then the year after, you'd get an even bigger set. And you'd be like, Ooh, I need this. I'll just say that for this one, I was very happy that I had some good friends in the U.S. who bought it on, on sale for me. Oh, okay. And brought it over, so I got it for a fragment of the price. I they wanted. hooked you up. Yeah. It's good having connections across <laughs> the globe, right, true. for these things. <laughs> and this is actually some of those... Uh, Technic ones that we that right. I mentioned, right? So here you have Yango Fed. I'm not really into technique, so I probably shouldn't say what I feel about it. But <laughs> it's there for those. Please who, share more. <laughs> for those who have that interest, right? Um, you have the Bounty Hunter Pursuit back when we were still doing chrome elements. Oh. So this is nice. Fancy. I love how colorful those are. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's from a one, another one of those movies. Um, and then you had these scenes, right? The Final Duel 2 scene, Final Duel 1. Um, I remember getting a lot of this because this would give you the officer and the stormtrooper and some other uh, minifigure. It was but, like a battle pack, basically. Yeah, Almost. It, at, at least it felt like a battle yeah. pack, but now it allowed you to, to get a lot of them. And, and this was actually a quite nice element as well, at least in the beginning when you were trying to build your own Star Wars dioramas. It could create a good display. So you got quite a lot of good elements, a couple of very useful minifigures um, at a good price, and of course, again, lots of chrome lightsabers. Look at these initial Ewoks, right? <laughs> like all tan element, and all brown. But back then, this was awesome. This was like, Star Wars actually, you know, introduced the whole molded head kind of thing. With all the crazy characters you kind of had to have that new type of minifig design. Yeah, well, you, Yoda would be kind of weird if it was just a, a green minifigure head, right? So, so there was some some moves to do that. And actually, I think, um, yeah, which one do you think was the first molded head? I don't know. It's from Star Wars. It's the it's one of the most hated Star Wars characters. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so he holds a special place in the Lego lineup then. He holds a special place in many places, uh, but in the in the history of Lego, yes, he does. He does. Two thousand and three. Click it. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff greets you in this aisle. <laughs> yes. Oh, look, my uncle. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh, I remember these. These were awesome. Ooh, those are very small. These were the, the mini building sets. These were fantastic. And I don't know, but for some reason, um, when you build them and if they had studs underneath, they actually fit on this uh, part oh. of the box. But so it was like to display it almost. You could like attach it there. If you wanted to. But the, the, I just think that the packaging was, was nice and I think that for, for micro models or mini models, they actually fairly good. Mm-hmm. And they were numbered, so you could see you had all of them from that year. Kind of a collector series. Yes. <laughs> Mini collectors, for those of us who were students and didn't have that much money. Um, what else do we have? Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Oh, God. <laughs> Frozen carbonite. <laughs> the very early carbonite piece. Yeah. But it's so, it's so basic, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, Skyhopper. You can shoot rats from those. What is this? Oh, the Genosian Five. That's where you got those in, in sand red. It's a pretty sweet color there. It is. It is. We all like that. Oh, let's see what we got here. Jabba's Palace. So this was probably what the first iteration of Jabba's Palace. Yeah. And where you get Slave Leia, and you get her in the yellow, 
uh, tone rather than the flesh tone that we see later. The, the world famous Thai bomber featured ever so many times in the movies. And the hailfire drive. Oh, I remember this, people discussed this quite a lot. <laughs> Whether this was a, you know, pseudo UCS display model or if it was a Technic set and if you were a system Star Wars collector, would you need this one or would you not need this one? These are the kinds of important things that LEGO fans discuss. <laughs> These, these are very important things that need to be, things need to be in the right place and they need to be addressed. And personally, I'm very happy that we now have like the Master Builder series and we have UCS. So we get that out of the way because that's something that we've been discussing in the fan community for years. What is a UCS set? What's a, ma what's a play set? What's a display set? Can a creator expert set be a UCS set? And now it's all been settled. Right, there's Star Wars UCS, that's the display ones, there's Star Wars Master Builder series, and that's the, the playset ones. I think the beginning here, 2004, you get the big Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a hefty one, right? <laughs> it's, it's not, actually not the first one. Um, we must have missed that earlier on. I think the first one had those massive plates, like four plates that you put in. Oh, right, yeah, the, like, the, uh, like the a UFO almost, UFOs, yeah, yeah. Flying saucer plates. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's definitely been a few Millennium Falcons across the year. I'm not going to guess at how many because there's people who who made a lot of uh, calculations on that. So here, that, and this is actually, this was, as to me as a fan, when this came out, I was like, hmm, ain't that something? And there was some intense discussion on this. So here you have Cloud City, and you have an amazing amazing Boba Fett in that set with arm prints and leg prints and all the things that we now take for granted where we are today but back then that was mind-blowing and he was pretty hefty on on the aftermarket as I recall it but if you notice the yellow it's still yellow except for Mr. Calrissian and you know rightfully so quite a few fans uh, got slightly upset and said hold on Lego never differentiates. Why is suddenly, because he's black, why is he suddenly a colored minifigure when yellow is the color of the mm -hmm. minifigures? And there was a lot of discussion back and forth. Um, but there was also another very joyful thing introduced, and that's this new, um, what's it, flower, spruce, what do you call them in English? Yeah, like plant piece. Plant piece uh, in, in, in brown, and un up until then they've been green, so that was also... Oh. Ooh, we get a new element and a new color. But people mostly focused around this uh, <laughs> minifigure suddenly appearing in a set um, in real life skin color. So that would have been the first non-yellow Star Wars minifig uh, in the series? Uh, risking not being as far as we've seen. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> definitely. We'll go with that. <laughs> definitely. Uh, and there you have the Rebel Snow Speed. As you can see, we're still at this point not fully set on, on UCS and how the packaging is right because we've gone from that excessive, beautiful black packaging with um, printings and everything and it said Ultimate Collector Series and now there's nothing. Now it's just, you know, the basic blue Lego set box again. And I guess this is also what added to the confusion in the fan community on, on when is it what and how is it. But later on, as we move on, um, our partner is actually uni um, uniforming um, the packaging design. So at some point, the design uh, of the packaging on, for example, Lego set and another toy, which are Star Wars, will be more or less the same within a given year. But we'll see that as we mm -hmm. let's move along. So here we now the snow speeder is reappearing and it's getting white. So it's actually a snow speeder, and we get the Mos Eisley Canteen and we get Greedo. And just for the reference, hand shot first, right? <laughs> Thank you for that. Way. Yes. Uh, you get the dew bag, amazing. You get the, the land speeder and you get it in, in uh, sand red, I think it is. I'm pretty certain it is. There's been a few iterations of those in different colors. Um, this was a great set. Mm -hmm. there's, so, there's so many different elements to it. You know, with the dew bag, you get the speeder, you got the, I mean, so you can have a lot going on with just such a, such a small set. Yeah. Yeah, and still, um, the filling degree is a little less than it is today, 
the boxes have gone smaller um, to save a bit of that so we don't have to send out so much bill and air to the world. And then we still had some of the flap design sets here as well, oh, so yeah. you could pull it up. Uh, see, and there's even, you know, other sets featured on the top of this. Let's see, this slide oh, over. Yeah. Beautiful. So you just buy a bunch of 10131 and uh, they put actually, the numbers actually, there conveniently so you yes, can just you know <laughs> which ones to buy to recreate this scene at home. Hearth version, right? The true princess. Now Disney has a real one. Um, and oh, I remember these. Whoa. This does not look like a typical Star Wars set. No, these were um, Kabayer products. And they actually, um, it's a poly bag, and it's these three that are featured in it. And it also has a rather large piece of chewing gum, like this <laughs> round ball that you chew, and it, it takes a while for you to chew through it. And then it becomes this, at least to me, who's not a fan of chewing gum, this massive piece of chewing gum in your mouth that you hardly can chew. But never mind that. There were three more or less exclusive um, Star Wars set in this and I remember buying them uh, online from uh, from resellers and having them shipped because you gotta go complete if you can right I never got to buy the the full box I would love to have this set. so what markets was this available in I think uh, I think it was Japan yeah. it's 14 years ago so I, I'm pretty confident it was Japan that they were available in what we got in the the rest of the world would have been, you know, we're back to the minis and getting them, and they're still numbered, so you can make sure that you get all of them for the for the year. And these were pretty decent. So mm -hmm. I like it when it hits a lot of different price points, so it's not all just massive sets. Sometimes you can achieve a lot by building a small set. And this was, funnily enough, also the year of the Wiener Dog <laughs> Duplo set. Not Star Wars, but still a classic Lego product. Still a classic, and it had a carrying handle if you wanted to bring it home with you when you bought it. You could carry it all just a little bonus for you Star Wars fans out there. It does, and it goes well with its, its best buddy, the Mr. Flying Machine, right? And he also has a carrying handle. There's even windows so that the bricks can look out when you fly it home. <laughs> Every brick wants that window seat. Everybody does. Everybody does. Actually, this was from that, that time and era. I was a huge fan of the X-Pods. Mm -hmm. These were some of the, my most favorite They builds. come in such a cool little like case there. They do, they do, and it's more or less all in system. Um, I bought tons of those. I had a, had have a friend who, um, another one from, from Eurobricks who built like these small spaceships out of them. So he built, added them and it was really, really cool. I wish I could just, say the link to the exact topics on, on your bricks but it's, it's out there at least and he did some amazing things with them and i always want to copy that but you know i never did i think we've got see so a this couple is, more so this is where where, where uh, 2005 is where this is now so this is where as i said you can see that the box design is aligning across brands so so this design up here is actually set um by the star wars franchise and saying this is how we want the Star Wars toys to look for this year. So that's slapped on and then the price going. This is the time of the the light up lightsabers. And we maybe they work. If I can get my I can't get my fingers in that. No. These are out of battery. They've been sitting down here for so long. But you could actually if you had child sized fingers, you could put your finger in and try them out. So you press down on the head and it would light up the lightsaber? It would light up the lightsaber. There's very elaborate tutorials on the internet on how to replace the batteries if you want to. So it's possible, but the lightsaber um, hilt and blade itself is actually part of the arm element, so you can't detach them again. Um, and also, I think that the the heads and, and headgear is glued on um, as it functions at a bu as a button. So this is the ultimate lightsaber duel. This is where Anakin gets tossed into the fire and becomes Vader at a. Spoilers, Kim. Spoilers. 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 I'm sorry. It's it's from those movies that we don't talk about anyway. Um, we start to see some of the the video games here. Yeah, it would seem to waste. This is a way different box design than we're used to these days, huh? Look at this. 
it's uh, fairly different. It must have been quite expensive to have added these cutouts where you can light them up another TIE fighter. Yeah, it's tall like an action figure box yeah. almost. Yeah, and Vader looks to be like a bit alone in there. Like, he could have done with the background or something. <laughs> yes. Or maybe facing facing the audience. <laughs> the art design was a little lazy on that one. <laughs> yeah, so there's a big Star Wars set down here. Well, there's this one, the clone tubal tank, the CTT. There's the the yellow Star Wars set, the big one. Oh, this is actually one of my my favorites. I built this at home. And this is another one where a lot of my uh, some of my US friends assisted me in getting it at a at a decent cost. So this is uh, the Death Star and it does death. And when you built this, you had to be quite quick about it. Not that you had to pick it and things together, but when you, at the end of things, if you took, say, too long in connecting all the final parts, it would like tilt. Oh. And you couldn't make it tilt back. So you had to you make sure that you put it all together because you built these from the bottom up like this, and then you connected them. Okay. It was quite the build, but it was it's a beautiful display model. It looks like it would be, yeah. If you live in a small uh, three-room apartment, as I did, it takes up quite a substantial amount of space when you display it in the living room. <laughs> so it, for me, it was only up for display for a week um, or two. And then I, I actually agreed that it was time to, you know, take it apart again and get it out of there. Otherwise, we, we were having trouble for our evening dinners and stuff to, to find a space. There were more important things happening in the living room. <laughs> yes, like real life, which also happens. But it's, it's beautiful. And it really looks like it. If you haven't built it, you should. And it does, I don't, I don't recall it including any super rare or unavailable elements. So I'm guessing it could be, you know, assembled out of people's collection. It's just as in, as a lot of the Star Wars sets are, a lot of gray mm -hmm. and shades of it. Have we missed out anything here? We don't want to miss out on another Millennium Falcon, do we? Let's see, I don't think we showed this here. Ooh. Oh, the Y-Wing. Yeah. Oh, this beauty. <laughs> Look at it. This is, this is actually, to me, where I got the point of greebling. Like everyone said, greeble this, greeble that, and I never really got it. But building this, just all these little details that's been added on top of it really made oh, now I get it. I may be a bit slow in, on that, but this made me get it. And I was like, to me, this is one of the most beautiful um, UCS sets ever made. This and the new Y-Wing that came out. Mm -hmm. There's an excellent variety of parts in there with colors and yeah. types and look, like like you said, with the Gribbling. I think that's the great thing about building sets is you learn all these techniques that then you can apply to other yeah. builds. And this one really had it. And maybe it's also because this is one of the ships that isn't, you know, like the Super Star Destroyer or Imperial Star Destroyer isn't black. What happened? We blacked out. We're going to switch over to night mode. <laughs> so where were we? It was getting dark and no. Uh, yes. The Y-Wing. Um, beautiful Griebling. Beautiful Griebling. Not as, I, I'm going to say black again. No, it's okay. Um, not as, as black and gray and, and dark as some of the other Star Wars sets. Um, definitely one of my favorites and what was the one behind it here oh, that's the tie collection so how many is there four in there yes so oh my. i remember this had some discussions as well right because you get it you get vader's tie there's the regular tie and then there's that pointy one the pointy one the, pointy the droid one. tie the droid tie and despite me being Star Wars fan and all, I don't know all the trivia and all the what's canon and not. But this one just it just never resonated with me. It seemed like someone's idea of something. Maybe it's I don't know a prototype that was never really brought into the movies. Someone's probably gonna correct me and say, "You see it in the corner of <laughs> that point two scene? second scene right there." Okay, how could you miss that scene twenty seven? That's twelve minutes and forty three seconds into the movie. That's actually where you see it in the upper right corner. Are you blind? And for that, I apologize if I missed it. Um, but yeah. It looks like it had some I, opening like uh, playability yeah, here. Yeah. That's the droid. That's the droid thingy oh, there you that go. drives it, I guess. See, here they are, the, the TIE pilots who don't want to fly this thing are dropping in the brain. The Even tie. they don't want to fly it, it looks so bad. No. 
Yeah. They prefer the old school ones. And then there's the advanced one, which uh, Mr. Vader himself flies when he's not in the cantina. But I do love that with the uh, collection like that. So you have like a whole, you know, air wing all in one set. Yeah, but that was the, what was that, 7150, which had, um, was that a Y wing and a tie as well? So you instantly could go into those aerial fights at home. It was even redone as a different set number at some point. Same set. Mm -hmm. Did we hit all these? I think we hit this. I want to make sure we show everything. You want to do some bionicle while we're here? <laughs> we should keep moving on the Star Wars because there's a lot to show, so we, we don't want to get yeah, too yeah, distracted. Yeah. We've done four years and 20 minutes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Two <laughs> hours later. Uh, so we're, we now emerge. In, we're now in 2007. And, uh, <laughs> ah, see? Anything? So oh. Were you building mocks at this time with, the, with your, all the Star Wars sets you collected, or was this pretty much just build and display for you? I, Crazy enough, I built, and then as I built it, I, I took the set apart and put it into a Ziploc bag and put it into a cardboard box, and they were sitting in my attic, and it wasn't actually until I started working at the Lego group that it finally dawned on me that the idea I had of building all my Star Wars sets again and displaying all of them at the same time was just never going to happen, and then I started sorting uh, the entire collection of Star Wars sets out into my own collection. So up until up until then, I actually tried to build marks and stuff out of my non-Star Wars collection. Oh, okay. But I've never been much of a marker. I think I've done two or three marks or something. I've, I've been more of a collector and, you know, online uh, discussions and forums on on Star Wars and Lego in general. No, totally. I think ever, that's the great thing about the community is everybody can kind of have their own approach to it. You, someone, you don't have to be the super talented builder. <laughs> even someone as uncreative as me can be there because... I think I built like a seven-year-old now. It used to be like a three-year-old, but I've gotten a bit better. Probably at least an eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, look at this. Look at this beautiful Star Wars set. Look at this beautiful Star Wars holiday train. <laughs> Isn't it something? Can you spot Vader? You have to look really closely. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, what's... I guess we should be looking at the other oh, that's side. that's true. We always skip to the wrong year. Oh, we aren't good at this. Mm. <laughs> so, this Star Wars set was introduced in... Oh. It's Vader's castle. It's, <laughs> it, well, uh, <laughs> it could be. Oh, we're going down here. See? The sand crawler. Built studs uh, definitely on top. It almost has like a pixelated look to it there, with the way yeah. the bricks are. Yeah. It's not so bad. You get Jawas. Mm -hmm. I remember this. You could lift out this entire section, right? That came out, I think. Let's see if you can flip it around. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. You could lift out the entire tool shop, and then you get to play at the, the full inside. And again, if you want to recreate this scene, these are the sets you need for it. Um, and there's some play features that are shown on the box as well. That's a lot of brown. But that's that's what it is, right? It's just a whole lot of brown. It's just a whole lot of brown. What else? There should be. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot of uh, Star Wars this year. Next to the previous oh, yeah. year, and we're just. It might. Think, oh, Exo Force. Well, we're not talking Exo Force today, <laughs> right? Uh, so what do we got here? Huh? Surprise, surprise! Another A-wing fighter, and we have the Tie Interceptor. Feel that box. Just. Let your hand slide across the tie. Ooh, ooh. ooh, so glossy. So glossy, right? It stands out. And again, as you can see, the design is, is aligned on the boxes. B-Wing, same thing where the ship itself. I love that, like a 3D effect there. An early 3D effect back in the days before 3D. And there you have it. Finally, oh, we we must have missed the uh, the old slave one. We gotta go back <laughs> because this is where we finally get a size which is decent. Like the first one, I think the set, the box size, was this much, was this big, and it's like this small <laughs> slave one, and you could almost fit in Boba and uh, the original um, carbonite hand solo. We gotta see what else is here. Why are these so dusty? Why isn't people down here talking? I know. I mean, Star Wars, who doesn't want to see this? I see. 
Ultimate Collectors, ATST. Yeah, a lot of gray. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's clearly an ATST. I don't there was a lot of hatred towards this one, but honestly I think it's a pretty good take on exactly just what it is, an ATST. The sets are getting bigger. The sail barge. And the standout box. With the man himself. Mm -hmm. And these people. So these other people not as important. And here you get her in uh, in the flesh tone. So we actually switched to flesh now. And again, if you want to recreate some scenes. Play features are shown on the back. There's a lot of exposed studs. Still, still a lot of exposed studs. Yeah, and this all, <laughs> this actually also has some ideas for alternative builds. You could do like this giant brown fish. <laughs> what in the world is that? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's Canaan, but it's there at least. <laughs> Star Wars fans were just looking to make like a steampunk whale there or something. Yeah, uh, and a pirate ship. You gotta have pirates, right? And apparently, you could, you know, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. What else do we have? We got oh, the Imperial Star Destroyer. So we get the Grand Moff Tarkin, mm. the Royal Guard, R2-D5, and the Mouse Droid. And some, you know, classic enemies. All right. Look how angry he is up there in his control <laughs> tower. He looks very upset and intimidating. He has the look of someone who doesn't break for anyone. But actually, you can open it and take it apart, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a playset on the inside. Let's, let's flip it around and see if it turns into a fish. It doesn't, but oh. but you get to build these guys if you want to. Hmm. So much going on in these pictures. <laughs> so if you click here, the escape pods out. Lots of space to place the minifigs. And if I don't know what 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 is this. If Vader moves to the left, his helmet comes on. Oh, it's because there's the helmet grabber thingy. Which oh. Grab his helmet, move over, and put it down his head. And you can redo the the scene from the movie where his helmet is added, and they're like all uncomfortable. At least the guy who comes into his room before the helmet is on, he doesn't it doesn't look too well. Okay. Put those ones back. I think they just stacked on top of each other. There you go. We don't want to mess up the archive here. No, that's the last This one. is a good time to mention, though, because past videos here, we've had people comment on this. So this archive is designed to be gone through like this. Um, so if you see us obviously touching the sets, flipping them around, uh, you know, examining them closely, that's what this is designed for. There are other archives, right, Kim, where it's don't touch and preserve in are, pristine. We, we have some Indiana Jones archives with crates and everything's carefully wrapped and backed and in fireproof areas and stuff like that. But this is the working archive. This is where designers can go to get inspiration and if we need to pull something to have a look at it or wanna do a temporary uh, exhibition up in the museum on, for example, uh, Exoforce, it's taken out of here. This is why we say that most of the time everything is here. Not everything is because it might be elsewhere in the building or on legal premises. And um, I think we also don't have education and uh, some of the promotional stuff down here. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, basically everything retail should be down here. Exactly. I think there's a couple more right here that we haven't shown yet. Oh, God. Remember this one day when minifigure scale? <laughs> Times. I actually bought quite a few of those because there were some of the elements that were nice. Look at this beautiful X-Wing fighter. See? What's that like? And I even think this one came with um, the tiles, so you can make either Luke's version or Wedge's version of the X-Wing fighter, because they don't have the same markings. Um, yeah, there you go. Exactly. Uh, as indicated here on the back. And again, these are the sets needed to recreate this particular scene. Um, wings lock in... Uh, Playable landing gear? Yeah. Just don't just don't put it down in the middle of the of the swamps. It'll sink and you'll have to become a Jedi to get it back out. So there's another 
UCS, well, that's a lot of UCS sets. Uh, Star Wars team was going big this year, 2006. Well, it doesn't say UCS, so maybe it's just Vader's tie advance. That's beautiful. And it, it, it deviates from the blue and black design of the TIE fighter so far. Might be because if we... Wasn't that... No, that wasn't the year before that we had the, the light up one. Right, yeah. Do we have a tie here? No, that's okay. It's all good. At least it's it's gray and black now. So it's more you, intimidating like this. <laughs> yes, and as you can imagine, I now have a vast collection of light bluish gray and black at, at home. <laughs> Those are my two most prominent colors. So I think that finishes up Star Wars for that year. So that was... 2006 this is 2007 Ooh. here so it's it's crazy how lego started producing so many sets that we kind of reach all one aisles one year now yeah because it, it, it way back it's like 10 years from one aisle <laughs> maybe 20 and then it becomes you know two years and then suddenly it's like you can see for the human have like five six and then seven suddenly takes up three shelves and it's there's a few more sets or maybe there's just more space between the sets in here who knows We'll see. This is the year over here, not here. Let's start over here. <laughs> Let's do it right this, this time. Off of more Exoforce. <laughs> um, the but some Star Wars as well. Some Star Wars as well. Uh, the ever beautiful Y Wing, which in this version looks like it has those golf balls mm -hmm. um, attached to it. But it's still, for a, you know, a, a regular retail set, I think this has a lot of greebling. Mm -hmm. But less variety in the colors. I feel like it's much more uniform, that kind of gray look yeah, than the one. Still, we've come pretty far from, you know, the first ones we saw in, in 99 right. until now, right? Uh, that's the Imperial Landing Craft, which gave you a good selection of stormtroopers with the pauldrons. Lots of pauldrons. Uh, and there's, there's one for those who fancy that. Um, yeah. The Hybering... It's a neat set, and then it just goes bunkers, right? The Tie Crawler and Shadow Troopers. And this is from, what is that, the Extended or Expanded Universe or whatever it is. Um, and this is just, this was just so weird. I remember just looking at it and going, like, huh, where is this from again? And I had to, you know take a quick glance at the prequels and it was not in there and then someone said well it's because it's from something completely different where you have shadow troopers I'm like okay and again i don't know that much about star wars outside of the original uh, trilogy and uh, and the prequel so i had no idea kind of, kind of a purist that way well there's tons of of stuff that you can read and i guess i just i liked the original trilogy and that that was more than enough for me. It was stressful, though, sometimes being a Star Wars moderator and people would expect you to know everything canon and non-canon and what is what is and what is not. So we still have that, you know, super glossy. Which ad. is a really cool box design. Do you know why they got rid of that? No, no idea. Um, I guess things just changes over yeah. years. Um, but these are actually, you know, fairly nice. Still, compared to what, what fans do today or what we expect of, of, of a Lego set today, uh, they may seem a bit basic, but they did the job. They got the job done. We have more of the See, this is the battle packs, right? This is where it really kicked off and you could build massive armies. And look at the number of figs in this. What is that, like seven there? Yeah. And this one has uh, four clone troopers. So... With buying relatively few, you could build uh, a rather large army and you even got like vehicles to, to add to it. And if it was like the space that you probably wouldn't use in a display, well, it gave you a neat collection of elements to add to your element collection that you mm -hmm. could then build even more stuff from. See, and now we get a Sith Infiltrator, which actually looks a lot more like the Sith Infiltrator than the first iteration of it, but it's all good. And then the Boo Starfighter. This is also a UCS set at some point, isn't it? I believe so. I can't remember if it's before or after, but the UCS had chromed elements. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> you have a limited edition Ooh. 30th anniversary set. 30th anniversary. Yeah. Hoth Rebel Base reminds me of a not UCS set of late. Um, but yeah, gave you those much wanted snow troopers, rebel troopers. Um, K3PO? K3PO. Highlighted, just so we know. <laughs> not that he's standing right there, but yeah, and a lot of uh, good wide elements and a snow speeder. So this one had a sister set, didn't it? Smaller one, which was also a hot base and those two combined i think there was like one that was like this size or something and combining them and buying multiple copies of each would allow you to build this place so you get the the upgraded trade federation mtt so now it actually becomes pretty massive and you got a ton of droids in that and for all those who have those droids remember to take them carefully apart when you're not using them because over time the clips may uh, may break, especially on the legs right here. I have a few who's done that. Oh, okay. Um, so after that, I sat down and meticulously took them all apart, and you you get to accumulate quite a lot of them over the years. So you have twenty in total here between all of them. Wow, that's a that's a that's an army right there. <laughs> it is. Wow. Yeah, and a lot of good brown elements if you didn't mm -hmm. want to keep the MTT going. And you're starting to get a smoother, more refined look here. Yeah, but this was actually, for, for a lot of reasons, a great set. You got all those um, tall slopes, mm -hmm. which were really nice, and especially corner ones are always a pain to get your hands on. And some good shape gears and discs. So you, you mentioned Eurobricks a couple of times. You were, was like a Star Wars moderator on there in a, during a lot of these early years. And so that's why you kind of had this, you know, yeah. pulse on the community of what people thought as these came out. Oh, yeah. I, I joined in, what was that, 2003. And I took over as a moderator in the Star Wars forum in 2008 um, and moderated for four years until 2012 when I started working for the Lego group. And I felt a bit of a conflict in being a moderator and being the one talking to the community <laughs> at the same time. So, so I stopped that. Um, but yeah, those were those were some fun years. Uh, starting out on Eurobricks, where we were, I don't know, 120 members in 2003 or something, and uh, now I think they have around 60, 70 thousand members <laughs> or something. So yeah, that's amazing. The community has certainly right. changed over the years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is also where we get the the motorized AT80. So now there's been you know, stuff at it compared to the Mindstorms one. Um, Except that this one is uh, is more of an on-off kind of thing, and not as uh, controllable. But this, I remember this as being a very fun build, and I tried to make this walk on uh, in the apartment that I lived in, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't do well on you know f a flat surface, which is not a carpet. Oh, so okay. it would basically just uh, stand and break dance at the same point, like do the do the Running Man very slowly. <laughs> Which was kind of sweet, but still. Battery's not included. No. And then you get the, the Republic Cruiser, which again, just to highlight which uh, droid is in there, it's R2, R7. Everyone's favorite Star Wars character. Yeah, but you got the Republic Pilot and the Republic Captain, and we didn't have those. So that was awesome. And it was a, an amazing build. And it's actually quite beautiful once you... Yeah, it's not all gray or black. That's a plus. I like it when they add a lot of, uh, a lot of color to these things. That's just bionicle. We'll just leave that in there. Are we missing out anything? Star Wars, that is. <laughs> Let's see. There's something here, but I mean, that wasn't too important, so... No, no it wasn't, was it? Uh, is there any other Star Wars sets here? You want to have a look at? It might be the only one. It seems like it's the only one on this shelf. Oh, <laughs> fine. Oh, it's castle. It's a very heavy modular building. Yeah. This is nice, isn't it? It is. Cafe corner. I wonder if it's old. Huh. 2007 now. Oh, yeah. I guess it is now. <laughs> oh. this, is, this is quite heavy, actually. This is, this is the front. Come on. If my neck... Back snaps. Just, just <laughs> run. Pretend this never happened. Okay. <laughs> It'll be worth it, though. You'll be holding the, the Millennium Falcon. 
Yeah, so this is the the first we can say now, the first UCS Millennium Falcon. The OG. The OG, yeah. It's beautiful. You have a brick built cockpit mm-hmm. and a lot of elements. I remember getting this. Did you buy it when it was when it was first available? Yeah. Yeah, I found it. I actually found it for someone apparently, you know, got it as a gift or something and didn't want it and sold it uh as uh, the person didn't want it anymore. So I got it fairly cheap. Well, I think it was like maybe 30% off the original price. So, but that was a lot of money at that point in time. I guess it still is for the new one if you get that 30% off. So I got it, bought it and brought it home. And it's been sitting in a in a box ever since. Was the size of this uh, kind of mind blowing to you as a Star Wars fan, or had there been enough big sets at this point that it was just no. you know another big set? This just took everyone by surprise. Like it's, it's. I think people dreamt of something like this, and they're like, "Oh, we really want this to happen." And then when it did, you just couldn't believe your eyes. And like <laughs> they did it. That's it. There's nowhere else to go. Now we they have to stop doing Star Wars, I remember someone saying. Because they peaked. They peaked. <laughs> can't get any better than this. We can't add on top of the UCS Millennium Falcon. It's it's a done deal. And honestly, at that point, some of us were hoping that the license wouldn't be renewed. We've heard rumors that it was a 10-year deal. So we were kind of hoping that by you know 1999 that it wouldn't be renewed. Um, but as we all know, it was, and uh, a lot of collectors cried out, Elko cried out in agony and pain. <laughs> so were you basically hoping that just because you knew that you'd have to keep collecting if they keep making them, or? Yes, <laughs> basically yes, because if it's there and you collect, then you have to get it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, even though you want it to go on forever, you also want it to stop at some point, but it didn't. So which now we is, have 2008. It's a good thing. Are we missing? Do we have? I don't see any on this Bob, side. Bob X of Force, Speed Racer. That was something. <laughs> that was something. The Beetle. Nah, there's no Star Wars there. <laughs> so, oh, this is where they all turned with that. Always the sign up. Oh. There it is. They all of a sudden become so bright. Yeah. It's like it turned from being very dark into being very bright, right? I think it's because um, we're done now with the prequels. We're done with the anniversary, the 30th anniversary. And now uh, I think the only really running Star Wars franchise at this point would be the Clone Wars animated series, right? Mm -hmm. So you get the Clone Trooper and it's, it's it's a lot about those. And I remember there was quite a lot of discussions on... Um, you know, the design of the minifigures suddenly becoming a little too animated. Like, people felt that, for example, Anakin didn't really look like, you know, the other licensed minifigures did that were taken out of the prequel trilogy or the original trilogy. That suddenly it was becoming a bit too cartoonish. Um, Especially um, Obi-Wan took some beatings. Oh, it's him again. That Rata, which was, what was that? Um, Jabba the Hutt's cousin or something, and he was kidnapped. And uh, Ashoka and Anakin went out to save him or something for the sake of uh, the Republic. But if you look at, at Obi-Wan, people were definitely calling him a cartoon character to look at, which he was in an animated series, but yeah. I've always loved this design there. It's very just isn't, like fighter isn't, pilot type isn't of... Isn't this the one that came with, with different stickers that you could add if you wanted to? Or was that is that me mixing things up? I'm confident that there was a guy on Eurobricks who did different stickers. So if you build different ships, you could like get his custom stickers okay. and, and you could do different versions. Um, but maybe this one didn't. And I also remember that there was a few of these because this is uh, the language. And there's a few who spent a lot of time uh, translating it and figuring out what they said and apparently some of them make sense but also some of them are just gibberish and if there's something that fans don't appreciate it's when it's you know 
just there for graphical reasons to look good, but it's dipperish when it's actually a um, designed and created um, language. They didn't actually put the time and thought into making something that made sense on there. No, they could even, have, you know, uh, some of them are Easter eggish, but you know, they could have at least have like fans felt that they could have at least just have shoveled in a lot of Easter eggs to, you know, keep the fans happy. Uh, let's see. Oh, the fighter tank. This was redone at a later point, not so long ago, wasn't it? See, this is another one of those that this ties in with that tie crawler thing, the expanded universe, where you have Juno Eclipse and Darth Vader's apprentice. Oh, yeah. I like that it's such a different looking ship. I mean, it's black Force and gray. At least, it says. Rogue Shadow. It looks very dark and grim. Mm -hmm. we'll just store these up here for now. Let's see what else we got. General Grievous display model. <laughs> well, and then we get the the first Death Star, so it's almost as old as the uh, the first um, UCS Millennium Falcon, and it wasn't until recently that we took it out and actually what you I don't know redesigned it and reintroduced right. it. Look at all of these minifigs. Yeah. It's crazy. But it, it it stayed as an active set for a lot of years and was almost immediately replaced by a new version as it went out of uh, availability. So I guess that there's really a, you know, a need out there for a Death Star playset since it's still around after so many years. Mm -hmm. Even though to a lot of the, the fans, it's confusing that the Death Star would stay around and not the Millennium Falcon, but there must be reasons. <laughs> There's always reasons. <laughs> and we get a few of the, the battle packs. We now get the Ripple Scout Speeder with these beautiful Ripples. An Imperial Dropship that gives you three Stormtroopers and uh, a pilot. Got a lot of those. Another Starfighter. The Hailfire Droid. In a smaller scale than what we saw it in. Mm -hmm. The spider droid. Oh god. Lift, lift this. <laughs> it feels like, like someone took all the pieces out. <laughs> I, I someone this must have been opened at some point and some of the elements are now missing. That's <laughs> whatever. The Magna Guard Starfighter. These are actually pretty cool, I think. Mm -hmm. There's some nice minifigures. It's a tight fit. There's only so much space in the archive here. Yeah. We have to cram it in. The ATAP. Which is nice. I must say there's so many sets. Actually, at the end of the day, uh, I think most of the sets from 2012, I didn't even get to build them. Like, at the end, I just, I just... It was too much. It was just too much. And I, and I built a few of them and the rest... Bags basically got sorted out directly into my collection. Terrible, terrible thing. Droid gunship. I think we've also seen two or three of these by now. Droids. So, so that's on. 2008. I think 2009 is next. Yay. Some good stuff for 2009. Yeah. Bionicle is still around. <laughs> There you go. See, this is the one I spoke about, the, the other uh, Hoth set. So this was 10-year anniversary. The other one was like 30th anniversary, I think, of the originals. Yes. So this is the 10th anniversary for Lego Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And the other one was for the movies. But look at this. You bought this and you got Snow Troopers, Rebel Troopers, Han, and Tauntauns. It was a good uh, build. This one, Vader's tie. There was an uh, a promotion with this. Um, at least I know of in Sweden. I can't recall if it was in other places. But when you bought this, um, 
on release. You got this, and then you got that um, black chromish uh, Darth Vader minifigure along with it. If you remember that, the shiny yeah. guy. So, nice exclu exclusive extra minifig. Yeah, and that quickly escalated on the aftermarket. This is this is not Star Wars, so we'll just put that up here. So this is oh, the super pack. See, the super pack that gives you everything. So there's two sets there's, within this. There's yeah, well, three sets, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, you get that. So you get Vader, you get the troopers, you get a shadow trooper, I don't know why, and then you get the ripple troopers that he can force choke, in one set. What more could you want? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there's a lot of Star Wars here. We have to go through it fast to go to the <laughs> oh, end yeah. of this. Ready yeah. to pick oh, up the pace. look at this. End of battle. Oh. You get them I love the, the camo ripple. prints. Yeah, the camo print. And you get them in the... And actually now the, the Ewoks are beginning to be not all tan and not all mm -hmm. brown. So they're getting there. And it looks... Yeah. Oh, this is a great scene where it steals the speeder bike. <laughs> Whee! Home one, the Mon Calamari Star Cruiser. You get Admiral Akbar. Mon Mothma. Lando Carissian. Now okay. <laughs> uh, the general and, a, and an A Wing pilot. We got an extra A Wing. Just, we need more A Wings. This one in green. I don't know what this guy's doing, if he's going to drink of that, if he's going to use it to fuel something. So, what was it that made this limited edition? I don't know. They just put that on there to sell more? You just slap it on for fun. <laughs> no. Um, I really can't say. I, I think it's, it's, it depends on where you are. Um, but in some markets, I guess the limited edition will only be available in certain toy store chains or certain supermarkets. Like in the U.S., you could have a Walmart exclusive or Target exclusive or something. Um, and then at the same time, over here, it might be exclusive to some completely different shops. Mm -hmm. uh, so a Toy R Us exclusive in the U.S. isn't necessarily a Toy R Us exclusive in uh, in Europe. It could be in Germany, but not in Denmark. So it depends on the different markets. Um, but it's certainly there's an opportunity to have this only available in certain places. Um, probably also because when the set was designed, it was identified as one of those that wouldn't necessarily speak to the regular toy store. Right? And it's not necessarily all kids who want right. this set. They may be more likely want some of this that is is branded into the Clone Wars that they watch because this also goes back to have because of the anniversary it has like the classic Lego Star Wars logo on top and we get an anniversary edition of the Blockade Runner this is the one we saw in black and white earlier right? yeah in a, in a UCS scale mm -hmm. so this is more of a system scaled uh, one you get Captain Antilles and a rebel trooper to force choke. So that should be Vader's desire when he gets the ship. So you've got those. Those are all the the tenth anniversary edition, and then you've got the the more regular looking white boxes that were becoming popular at this point. Yeah, you get the one with the angry Kanduko, and he also we still chrome at this point. Look at him. Look at how angry he is in the, in the animated that version. He's not a happy man. Angry can't do cool. Solar Sailor. So this one actually folded up and then it shot out the solar sails. It's also limited. Go figure. The pilot droid, which has what appears to be a skeleton bone, as it said. But you get the chrome lightsaber. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on there. See, that, that head is something else on the droid. Yes, let's not let's not dwell. Um, so there's yeah the the yellow Y wing, and it, it to me that was completely weird until at a later point I I saw some of the animated series and I'm like okay well I guess then the Y wing starfighter in yellow and white. So different from the usual Star Wars colors. Yeah, so very, very, very fresh. <laughs> very fresh. Looks like a squeezed lemon or something. <laughs> yeah, so, so would you say you're a fan of the the Clone Wars series that these were based on? Not at this point, no. Um, they're bringing it back, right? They're bringing something back, I think. Okay. Um, but I actually watched them at some point because it, once you go like 
you know, Star Wars moderator and people are talking about it. And at some point you're like, oh, okay, I'll sit down and watch it. And I sat down and watched it. And after, it's like, you know, some series you have to go through the first season for it to actually, you know. It picks up. Yeah, it picks up and, and, and it, it starts working. Um, and that's actually what happened. And I, I enjoyed it, but I did. I must admit that I did, you know, binge watch it, so I can't remember all the details and everything. But I have, I have watched it. But I'm still a, a original trilogy fan, and uh, and then also I actually think that the newer ones are pretty good. So I remember this. This was also one of those that were slightly my brain because you got the you got the Republic gunship, and everyone was saying, "Well, we need the drop ship." And people say, well, you can always mud it because the Lego group will never do it. And the Lego group did it. Uh, and people started, you know, buying out these dark green seats on uh, on various sites to to mud this into actually having enough clone troopers in it. Um, and I built this. I even think I did a a, a review for the Ding's lock back in the, at that time um, on it. And it works really well. Um, the functionality and picking it up and the fact that you have like a handle so you can swish it around oh, okay. um, works really, really well. But I remember this being a fairly high price point, like $250 or something. Roughly converted from today's prices. So in the US, it would probably have been like, I don't know, what, 120 or something? <laughs> since you, always paying more over here. <laughs> since you apparently get your Lego sets for free more or less in the US. <laughs> You would think you'd have a pipeline to the factory, but no, they're just, you know, hiking the prices way up. I don't know if they're hiking the prices <laughs> up. I think there's, there's a lot of things that plays into the pricing of a Lego set. Uh, oh, I remember. This was actually, not this, but yeah. It's it's okay. I think this is, uh, I like the color scheme. Of it's it. a tank, so that's cool. Yeah, and the Clone Wars really wanted to, you know, add some color to, to an otherwise... Um, very gray and black Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. more battle packs. So you get the assassin droids and the clone walker battle pack. More starfighters, just in case we needed them. And the vulture droids. See this, I'm so sorry this never really picked up. I just love the meaty scale uh, designs. This is actually my favorite uh, Millennium Falcon. Because it's so... So would this fall between like micro and minifig scale, or or is it all micro scale? Um, it, it's somewhere in between. Uh, the designers of Lego named it midi scale, um, and actually I remember we ran a contest on Eurobricks in which there was a midi scale entry opportunity, and there were the most beautiful models in there, like a midi scaled AT80, which was just you know very cuddly, and you just <laughs> wanted it, but. But they did this one, and then there was another one. Can't really remember which the other midi scale was right here. Um, but those were the only two ever done, and then it was taken out of the portfolio. They again. just weren't popular enough, I guess. I don't know. I I, I hope that is the reason, and it's not just because. Um, but I really, I personally really would have wanted to see more of those, because I think it's a great scale, and. Kind of sorry that it didn't pick up with the fan community because if the league group doesn't do it, the fan community can just do it themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Most often, even better because there's not the same production limitations, right. restrictions, and everything. Restrictions and like it's the it's not that many fans who go and take their new mark and just put it into the oven for 24 hours just to see if it comes apart. <laughs> like you don't do that. That's but. not something you experiment with when you build a mock. <laughs> no, but then again, I've only built two or three, so who am I to say what people do? But <laughs> So we're in uh, 2010 now, so no, mo more than 10 years of uh, Lego Star Wars at this point. <laughs> we're hitting a little less space <laughs> for each uh, shelf that we walk into. What we got? Here's the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we, we don't miss out. We missed out already on so much, I think, that we just... There's a, there's a big one right here. There is, isn't there? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one, I guess. Ooh, yeah. Land the shuttle, the Imperial shuttle. This is the pilot. Isn't it beautiful? There's a lot of technique beams here for wing structures. Mm -hmm. 
We actually have one of these sitting in office. Um, that I walk past every day. It's a nice set. It's very white. It's also very heavy. So let's see if we can flip it around so we can look at the back of it. See if there's anything. Play features mostly. Mostly the wings going up and down. That's basically, that's basically what it does, isn't it? <laughs> flies in and the wings goes up or it takes off and the wing go down and like, hey. It's hours of fun right there. Yes. Shuttle Tidarium. But there's a lot of, uh, you know, D, uh, Star Wars DNA and, and, and reference in that particular spaceship mm -hmm. that, that really speaks to the fans. What else we got? Uh, yes. I guess this, at that point, was perceived as a, a UCS set because it has the five-digit numbers. And at this point, sets in general still had, as you can see, four digits. Right. So it as, the plaque as well. Yeah, came with so, it. yeah, the plaque as well. But as soon as you hit that five-digit and it was one zero, it was like, oh, so this is... Uh, th that was one of the identifiers that we at least used in the fan community. So this is, a, in my opinion, all UCS set, 676 pieces. Right, yeah. It's not exactly what you would expect from a UCS set today. No, but uh, but it's actually pretty neat. Once you build it and you put it on the, on the display and you have the sticker underneath, it, it's exactly one of those UCS sets that you can have in your living room without, you know, having to sit on the floor <laughs> when you eat or something. It doesn't take up that massive amount of space. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, this is also where we welcome the oh, yeah. collectible, collectible minifigs. minifigs. It's amazing cool. how long they've been doing those. Yes, yes. Especially when you look at them now and it's, what, Series 18 or 19 or something, and then you remember that, for example, the Lego movie and stuff like that doesn't count toward the series numbers. Mm -hmm. So there's, I don't know, 25 of those movies or something by now. It's madness. And Toy Story in two different packagings. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Another Grievous Starfighter now in a bigger box. And slightly bigger design. There's some Cat Bane, Clone Wars. He's he's pretty badass. That outfit's pretty awesome. Yeah. He doesn't take no for an answer. Plus, I'm pretty confident he doesn't break for anyone either. Uh, what else have we got? Palpatine Seattle. Yeah, this, this is actually, in my opinion, not one of the best Star Wars sets done. It's a uh, it's a little weird. <laughs> it looks almost like it's half finished. Like it. Um, I, if you if you watch that um, particular movie uh, that this references, it it does look more or less like that. I'm just personally a bit puzzled as why you would do that particular ship. Uh, but that's of course an agreement between the Star Wars designers and uh, the license holder, and and you do get the the medical droid, and you get the. Um, Anakin Skywalker, as he is, he's messed up and about to be, to be fixed by the medical droid and become um, Mr. Vader. But yeah, no, I think that the set could have been spent a little better, for my liking, at mm -hmm. least. Um, a new Slave One, another fine version, where you also get Bosk and you get the hand and carbonite when it's not just a very long. One by two right. brick. A much more realistic looking. <laughs> well, that depends if you want to use the word realistic in, <laughs> in the same sentence as saying Star Wars. <laughs> a new AT-80. Up and improved. A nice version. Again, ties into the, the Battle of Hoth. I love how they put uh, C-3PO kind of front and center with a very puzzled look on his face. Well, he's always a little off and puzzled, <laughs> isn't he? So I think he's, uh, he's good to throw into anywhere where he can panic. And then we get another clone turbo tank, this time in the, in the Clone Wars uh, setting. So you get another Cat Bane and you get Isla as well. I actually think that these minifigures are, are beautiful. Despite them being very cartoonish and everything, I, mm. I really, really like them. Plus they added a lot of flavor to uh, to the Star Wars universe suddenly having very colorful characters. Oh, there's, there is. It's the ISD that was the other midi scale set. Oh. It does look nice. You're, you're right. I mean, it's it's a nice scale, uh, a scale that, to build in. That really could, you know, um, showcase a lot of the, 
the vehicles of the Star Wars universe without taking up too much space. Mm -hmm. And you could do it fairly simple and it would still, you know, be very iconic and show exactly what it is. It's like uh, this whole thing in the community that we've seen in the past couple of years where, where people really tend to build as iconic as they can with as few pieces as possible. And it's just amazing what, what some people can do with just a handful of pieces. And it's, oh, yeah, that's the Big Ben. Of course it is. Um, so size isn't always important. Oh, there's more. Um, battle packs. And we go back into the snow here with the rebel troopers and the snow trooper battle pack. Rico speeder, Anakin Skywalker, and that thing <laughs> sticking. Is that the tongue sticking out? I don't or think we it, need to know. Is it like it's uh, front teeth or something? Wow, oh, it's scary. It's scary is what it is. Um, the droid tri fighter, a nice build for those who haven't built it. I actually like how these are are designed. The wings works really well. And the build is, is quite fun. So we, just for good sake, let's take another land speeder <laughs> while we add it, right? It's been, so, it's been a few years now, and there's probably some who don't have it. So we'll toss it in. We'll make it tan and dark red, and uh, it'll make people happy. And you even got the you know, uncovered engine on one side. Why are all these upside down? This makes it very complicated for me. Swamp speeder. Enough said. ARC 170 Starfighter. That's actually a nice Starfighter. Yeah, I like all the different wing elements. It's it's, it's very elaborate and the build is very good. Um, and the control system on you know, opening and closing the wings is actually real nice. And Kid Fisto is a cool minifigure. What do we got there? Yes. <laughs> not not the highlight of the series. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, the TIE Defender. Look at just look at it. There you go. You get a pilot and a stormtrooper. Soak, soak this one in. We just we'll just let that that sit right there and just just let it hang. It's a defender, is what it is. I actually think that the wings um, turn so you can spin them around oh, the yeah. around the cockpit. Like a turbine type of thing. Yeah, something like that. Someone's probably going to correct me for being wrong in that, but that's okay. Let's put this with the top up. Better do it properly, so next time someone comes in and wants to see the Star Wars sets. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Oh. Oh, we can't walk by this one. No. <laughs> okay. It is very large. <laughs> it is. Uh, how do we even miss it? What is this? Pet shop? At least it says pets on it. So. <laughs> it does say pets. Maybe it's a Star Wars set. <laughs> That's good. Ah, we'll trains. The world wants trains. Oh, remember this one? I do remember that. That was that was different, wasn't it? That was something, wasn't it? That was like this um, this app, and. You had a time challenge, and you had to build something and scan it with the app on this uh, cardboard piece which was in here. And then you would uh, score on how quick you were to rebuild it. Um, but then it also became a thing with uh, George traveling. So people would build George and take him traveling across the world and take pictures in different places. Um, it would have been interesting to see how this would have fared today, I think, because... It's still quite a lot of years ago, and given how many now have access to uh, to the internet and have Instagram mm -hmm. accounts and stuff like that, I think this could have been way, way more crazy today. Because this was 2011, so yeah, I mean, certainly a far bigger rise in smartphones and technology since then. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I almost forgot about this. <laughs> it is easily forgettable, isn't it? <laughs> this one, not so much, huh? With the first idea set? Uh, Kuso, but yeah, er, what yeah. later what later right. become like it even says Lego Kuso zero zero one. So this is the first 
one. Not many of these ever made. I have one at home. But it's in a secret place. Very secret. I hold it very dear. It's one of the few that a few that I haven't built. I mostly often I'm I usually build the idea set. Because they're just great. They are. So this super star destroyer, as if the Imperial Star Destroyer wasn't enough, we needed this one as well. And it's a lot of gray, and boy, talk about Griebling. Yeah, and talk about going nuts from Griebling. <laughs> this is clearly where you lose it when you try to Griebel. Because you just, well, it takes so long. But it's beautiful when it's done. But again, it takes up a lot of space. It's uh, mm -hmm. 49 inches long. That's a lot of space on a dining table. You know, you don't have to put all your sets on your dining room table, Cam. What else would you put? What else, what else would you put something that big? Like in, in your bed? Well, how do you sleep then? Maybe above the mantle, like fireplace? Do you think that could your, sit your, on your mantle? Your mantle? Danish apartment has a nice fireplace for that, right? Uh, well, I, I have a house now, and it does have a, uh, a, a stove, but I don't think I'd put plastic on top of it. It would just melt down across. That's probably a good idea. Where are we moving now? 2011. <laughs> are we moving too slowly? <laughs> we, we should speed things up probably. Right. This is more more modern anyway, so people will remember more of this. Please ignore the sound of boxes dropping. That's right. We definitely are not dropping things on the floor. We didn't do it. Somebody else did. It sits right there. <laughs> Let's get, get, get tight in here. You gotta snuggle up with the sets. Is there any Star Wars? <laughs> there, there's here's one. Why is there there's one right here? That's the isn't that the advent calendar? Oh, that's why. Right. Yeah. We get the Yoda. Christmas Yoda. <laughs> Christmas it is, is it? Gifts. One you. Oh, here they are down here. Oh. That's gonna be tough to get low. <laughs> I'm forty plus. I can't. <laughs> I, they need I, a senior aisle. If I can't get back up, then I blame <laughs> you. <laughs> Where are we? All right. So this is what would be about the time that you stopped collecting every single set. Like the, this year, next couple of years here would have been. Yeah, this would have been the, like a, one of the final years that I that I tried to collect in. Actually, this I did a review of. And this is one of those where I believe that the writing on it is gibberish. Um... This right here, uh, people try to translate it, and I'm like, N -n no, it doesn't. It doesn't really make sense. And if you look, it's slightly different than it is in uh, the animated series, where it does make sense somehow. So no one really figured out why or how. But it's a, it's beautiful, and so actually a nice build. And you, the, the motors changed placement. The pod racers. When you make that, he is. What's his junkyard? That was the one that I had to purchase later, which was ridiculously expensive oh. at that point because up until here, I think he was only featured in Watu's junkyard. And it was one of the, he looked like one of those first iterations of the Ewoks. <laughs> so he was like all light blue here. And he had light blue hands, and those were super rare. And, you know, it was just. But, but you had to have it. I needed it. I must have it. So another Hoth Echo base. We're getting a few of those by now, but. That also gives us a pretty solid army and army of Tauntauns as well. A couple of uh, battle packs. We're introducing the Mandalorian battle pack. Personally, when I when I heard the rumors of this, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. We're going to get different Mandalorians. Except they all look the same. <laughs> so that was a bit of a letdown, at least to me. We get a giant Sith infiltrator. So now it's up in size, and we have an angry Darth Maul. Pairs nicely with the angry Count Dooku. Yeah. Those are best friends. Um, and the Imperial Weaving Starfighter. Yeah. And a new Millennium Falcon, just to top things off. As if we hadn't spent enough money that year already. Now in a very, very cool version. This is one of my favorites. Except for when, if you flip it upside down, all these will just open or fall off. So don't don't invert. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't play with it too much. Don't invert it while you swish it around in your living room. You'll be fine. 
and be careful not to hit the stuff that you have on your dining table. Um, and a new Republic frigate. So we got a few of those, right? There's the Red Cruiser we had earlier, which looks a lot like it, and then there's the Blockade Runner. So a good collection of Republic ships by now. We got this pile over here. Oh God, there's more. There is more. <laughs> The Sith Night Speeder. The, the Night Speeder? Oh yeah, with um, what's her name? S Sever several names that I can't pronounce. Asai Ventress. Anakin Skywalker is, uh, <laughs> is tough on you. And uh, Savage Opress. Yeah, the Yellow Darth Maul, as I used to call him. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> we don't want to. Let's not tell anyone. Yeah, that's a good way to upset the Star Wars fans. It's, he's not Darth Maul. No, we know. We know. Unless we got the Ewok attack with a new Ewok now in black and a more elaborate friend. More of the Naboo droids and Gungans. Because the world needs more Gungans. Do you know she in Starfighter? Jedi T6 shuttle. Yeah. So many sets came out in such a short while. And I think it even gets worse from here, doesn't it? There's like more and more every year. Um, the Battle of Geonosis. It looks like she's wearing sunglasses. That's pretty. It looks like a sunny planet, you know? Yeah, well, I think it is. I think it is. That means we knew that's more of that Battle of Geonosian. And another Naboo Starfighter. I'm puzzled why we did so many of those. That's always been my biggest complaint with Star Wars, the theme, is just the the crazy amount of re-releases. That when it seems like there's so many other kind of creative avenues that Lego could put that time and money into instead of re-releasing the same thing again and again. But that's just me, and I know a lot of big Star Wars fans enjoy it. If you get new fans in all the time, then... At some point, there will be enough new fans that don't have the X-Wing fighter. And then you reintroduce it for them. It's like the police station, right? Yeah. Or the fire station. Right? The city line approach. It's, it recycles every now and then for the newer fans. And of course, if you've been collecting city for the past 20 years, you're going to say, well, this is the seventh <laughs> police station we've had. But not, not everyone, not every fan has been there for that long. So the good thing is that... As I figured out at the end, you don't need everything, right? So just stop collecting and buy what you want, and you'll be fine. You're right. There is a massive amount of... There's like all of this right here plus this down here. <laughs> maybe we should just highlight a few yeah, things. Yeah, maybe you start picking out your favorites uh, now. <laughs> oh, well then. I don't know if this is a favorite, but I actually think this was a quite fun idea to do the Planet mm -hmm. series. Um, and the way that A-Falls have used those planet parts and mocks is just so creative yeah. and amazing. And it was actually the, you know... A fresh take on getting those mini models of earlier, and then you added a planet as well, and people could hang their planets from their the ceilings or whatever they want to do in their in their rooms or integrate them into models. Personally, I really really like the Death Star. It's it's awesome. Any special mentions that we want to do in here? More battle packs. I don't know. Oh, there's even more over here. It's like everywhere. <laughs> Um, I think this is when they realize, you know, Star Wars is really what we should focus on. See, another X-Wing, but, but can you seriously say that this is not a beautiful X-Wing? And it shouldn't be here? I don't think so. Yeah, it, it is a nice build, but when you've already done like six of them. But you need a, you know, honestly, I guess you somehow do need a giant army to, you know, defeat the Empire anyway. <laughs> this one is, there's another one of Life of George in a different box. Here's a unique Star Wars product. Oh, yeah, the games. I'll just, there we go. Have you played it? I have not. You should. It's fun. Is it? Yeah, it's quite fun. It's a, it's a good games. I love these guys just like poking their heads out the top <laughs> there. Of the AT-AT. AT. <laughs> Looking out. Oh, here we come. And this guy riding the Tauntaun. <laughs> yeah. And the ATST. And you get this wide collection of microfix. Love Boba. Doth. Looks, mm -hmm. It looks so off. <laughs> Fun times. 
Oh, you also have the the B wing UCS, and then you get that. Oh, this beautiful guy right here. Let's see, what's not to like? I mean, look at that. Just just model it. I've seen some pretty nice takes where people have rebuilt it just from bricks they have, and they get those, these beautiful rainbow colored uh, droids instead. <laughs> Which is just nice. Would you say, in general, you're a bigger fan of like these bigger kind of busts or display pieces of Star Wars, or more the play kits, maybe the smaller stuff over the years? I think that over the years I've become more a fan of of the larger sets, but that's mostly due to the aesthetics of it. That you get to the build experience is really nice because that goes a lot into the techniques. Whereas you could say that a, I'm not saying that a regular retail set is not that but when you have something like like this and the age is 7 to 12 years old then the build reflects that whereas mm -hmm. in the in the UCS sets um, like like this where you have a whole different age marking which is 16 plus of course the set is that more complex to build and you know that just makes it more interesting um, to me for example to build because I I appreciate the techniques and and how it's designed and how it all comes together um, and I'm not you know I'm not doing the build to get it done so I can play with my my Star Wars right I'm not saying I don't but um, yeah I think that over the years these have these speak more to me but these are definitely a better price point for for my wallet so. <laughs> your so, family appreciates these ones <laughs> so sometimes it's a compromise right <laughs> on, on what you what you want and what you get um, Here's the, what I believe was a somewhat controversial uh, Jabba's Palace set, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but that wasn't until long after. That was actually not until it was going out oh, or okay. outgoing. So that's that's not until two years from now or something. That, <laughs> that there is a controversy where um, certain people in a community, I think, I think it was Austria, um, found it offensive. And, and file the complaint as they rightfully should, as, as whenever someone feels something is uh, offensive to them and it was uh, investigated and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, but that, that was like, that, that, and that's a, that's a bit what happens as it is announced that it's going out of production and we're stopping it, <laughs> that someone sees it and, and responds to it. But we always appreciate feedback from any customer on what they feel good about or what they feel uncomfortable about or where they see issues with our products. Because we are certainly not intending on offending anyone in anything we do. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Another skiff. Includes a poster inside. It's Yeah, apparently there's a poster on the inside and we also get Max Rebo. It's like a tiny blue elephant. Yep. Mm, he made a song, I'm not an elephant. <laughs> I wonder if we can see the poster, we can't. But we do get the, the printed, the face printed, uh, Jabba the Hutt. So he's not just a pile of sanguine. <laughs> and we have another Republic gunship. What else is there? Got the, the X-Wing here? Yeah, yes. Oh, I wonder how we missed the first X-Wing. Like there's a there's one that came out oh. as the very first that was a tie and a was it a tie and an X-Wing at the first UCS sets? That does sound right. There's a lot of sets down 7 here. 7151, 7141. Is that the names of them? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this this is a beautiful X-Wing. Uh, but it also upset quite a lot of people because they were upset that we were redoing a uh, UCS set. Even though I actually think that this is a really, really good remake. This is the one that I believe when the, they built the giant X-Wing that was in Times Square in New York City. This set was available. This was the one that they upscaled? Uh, I believe so. And that's also what was for sale with a special sleeve uh, New York City and the I, uh, I Heart New York uh, Yoda minifig in New York City oh, yeah, the, during that time. Oh, that Yoda minifig. I don't have that. I wish I did, though. I'm glad I stopped collecting around this point. <laughs> so this is uh, the Ewok Village. Beautiful set. Um but not a display vehicle as, as you would expect the UCS sets to be, right? 
So this also spun off a lot of discussion on is it is it not a UCS? But now we know it's a master builder series. Mm -hmm. You just gotta wait and those things get clarified. Yeah. That's how it usually is, isn't it? If you wait thing for long enough, then things kind of solve themselves or go away. Patience is not one of the, the big parts of the AFOL community. <laughs> no, but I get it. It's, uh, if you're passionate about something, then patience is very, very hard. I know that very much from, yeah. uh, from myself. And fans are very passionate and do have opinions, um, as they should. Community goes quiet one day. I'll be very, very scared <laughs> because then something is... <laughs> oh no, they aren't speaking to us anymore. <laughs> then something is really, really wrong and, uh, and we need to do something. Oh, there's so many more sets here, isn't there? Anything that we need to take? Oh, there's the, there's the Yango Fit Christmas guy. So you can slightly see him here. I think he's uh, fully highlighted. So, oh, there he, there he hangs. Um, and just to be sure that you know he's in there, uh, he's even featured right there <laughs> on the side of it. Christmas Yango. I wish we, that they could have done like the, the helmet in red as well. Mm -hmm. But I guess there's a limit. Uh, it looks like a kid who got like a Star Wars helmet on Christmas and is like trying it out. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, this is also amazing because this now you get a see the rancor that is a beautiful monster yeah and also the gamorians are now looking pretty awesome yeah look at how detailed the face print and design is about to be eaten so I, I get why it looks a bit off <laughs> but yeah and again a lock design on the on the boxes for that year ah. <sighs> we're done let's think i think with, with this aisle we'll move into move into 2013. Can find one? there's a few mandalorian super commandos so there's an opportunity to get other mandalorians that's not a mandalorian these two wow that's kind of scary isn't it <laughs> yes there's Le a lot of variations of that look legless darth maul oh. Wow, we got plenty of space to move around in here. <laughs> you know what? Don't want to mess up the Disney sets. What do we have? More minifigure boxes. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. Galaxy Squad. That was actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. No Star Wars on this side, right? We're done. We're good. I don't see any. There's one right here. Oh, there's, there's a few. There's one on the top as well. <laughs> Is that it? I guess that might be it. Not a lot in this aisle. <laughs> no. Oh, well. That's the... I don't know if that's the next year or this year. I'm not, I'm not sure which year are we in. <laughs> 2014? Anyway, there's a sink roll on the top of the shelf that's right here. That's right. Uh, where you now have a lot of, of plates instead of stacked bricks and uh, angled plates and holding and stuff like that. And uh, the cockpit is not a sticker anymore. Um, that's actually a really nice set. Mm -hmm. But I also like the, the, the brand new one that came out, the very small one, which compared to that actually could be slightly meaty scaled. That's a nice and nice set, again, in a good size. So. Plus it's been, it's been made so small that it's not really offensive to you as a fan that it's that small. It's like, okay, it's super small. So it's over small, which makes it okay. <laughs> right? Whereas if you try to achieve something that looks like the scale a um, sand crawler could be in compared to a minifigure, there will always be a lot of opinions on whether or not you're close enough or too far off. But when you make it like this small and you have next to it, you go like, okay, this is never intended to even attempt being the right scale. Mm -hmm. And then there's the UCS Slave 1, which is absolutely smashing. Yeah, I think this is a fan favorite here. Yeah. Not much else to say about it. It's just <laughs> close to perfection. 
at least from what we as a toy manufacturer can do, I think this is uh, top-notch delivery. That, that one deserves to be on the dining room table. Yeah. yeah, well, it does. People are welcome to disagree. We will all have our opinion on different things. Oh, there's a lot of Star Wars on the next shelves. And we're in 14. There's only four years-ish to go. Coming up, what, on, tw on 20 years of Star Wars, aren't we now? Um, <laughs> we're also getting smaller and darker aisles. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the micro fighters that are now available. Which gives you, you know, small, cute versions of the sets that feature, or, or the models that feature a minifigure. So this is a very small X-Wing fighter with a pilot. So it's all good. And then there's a bunch of battle packs. You know, you notice that the battle packs become more popular as we get closer to today. It's like yeah. just series of battle yeah, packs. And, and in the beginning, I think there was two battle packs a year. Now we are up to having two battle packs in the first half, two battle packs in the second half of the year, right? Uh, the Tri-Fighter is back up here. Um, the Droid Gunship is back. And all of these walkers. Where you get some of uh, the Wookiees. Jedi Interceptor, in case you were missing those. Starfighters. Another battle pack. Grievous's roll thingy. <laughs> You can sense that this is the point where I don't collect anymore. <laughs> You're like, ah, it might be losing interest. Oh, Benny Spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> that could be in Star Wars. Oh, there you go. Here's the Star Wars. All the way down in the in the dark corner. <laughs> so we got a new AT-80, which is actually getting pretty good, I think. Oh, gee. So this beautiful thing. Let's, I think this uh, design is a bit scary. Look at it. And there's a poster inside. Uh, you got an external light? <laughs> so we've had to pull out the external light here as so we get oh, into dark, deep into the cave. <laughs> ah, that's blinding. <laughs> um, do we have anything else Star Wars on this particular? There's something stuck in here, which looks like to be another MTT. We've seen a few of those by now. Um, we have an ISD card down here. One of the, that, is that Rebels? Is, that, is this one Rebels start? It might be. Some sharp-eyed viewer can let us know in the comments. Yeah. A new Moss Eisley Cantina, I think it is. Yeah, the land speeder, the Dewback. Where is it? The Homestead? Let's, let's whip that one out. That looks interesting. <laughs> it looks like something out of the real movies. Yeah. New Cantina. As I, as I said, that was lucky for me, wasn't it? Otherwise, the comments would have torn That's me apart. Right. That's what I'm most looking forward to with this video is all the Star Wars fans coming and just tearing apart everywhere. I think we've done about like, oh, you know nothing. I, I agree. I, I don't know. I just pretend I know stuff. Um, this is actually quite cool because you get the Cantina band, right? Or some of it. And then you do back. And Han and Greedo. This one was here. What do we got here? Oh, a snow, a snow speeder for a change, just in case. Harpoon is firing. What else? Is that it? Minecraft is not really Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, loosely I defined. <laughs> I know that much. Star Wars and Minecraft is not the same thing. Yeah, Rebels. This is where Rebels oh, kick off. So this is the, the Phantom. I can't remember for the sake of it what the name of that other ship is. The bucket? No. <laughs> the shoe? Uh, someone will know and correct me. Star Wars Advent Calendar is down here. Oh, there's plenty of Star Wars here. Ooh. Another T-16 Skyhopper. Um, that looks surprisingly similar to the older one. That yeah, honestly, I think it's a little bit worse. But the T-16 is not that beautiful either right. anyway but this has the the tuscan raider and he is awesome mm -hmm. right. you want those battle packs and then the star wars advent calendar and this time it's vader oh. who gets to wear the christmas suit and there's a christmas tree <laughs> robot i mean they're really creative with those yeah they try they try the, even the 
snow troopers are bringing Christmas gifts, and all Luke's wants is a lightsaber so he can get out of the Wampus Cave. A few more battle packages, thingies. Oh, yeah. I honestly, I've never watched Rebels, but I think that this is just beautiful. The mm -hmm. color scheme where you have orange and dark green. This is beautiful. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of it in here as well. Is this is this this looks to be a lot of this looks to be rebels. Yeah, it looks like the that oh, orange uh printing design seems to well, tie it all together. Yeah, but then it would say rebels in the lower corner and these don't. Right. Because if you look right. the ones that refer directly to that animated series has this, the Rebels logo, so these are the because it's the prequel. See there you have a well, there's a ninja, the Inquisitor. Well, there you go. And microfilus. Oh, oh. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm starting to lose you. Just a couple more years. <laughs> Just a few more years and we're done. You can go, go back to where you came from. At least the light is better in here. That's true. We actually have a light here. This space. More light and sound. Big boxes of Mixels. Mixels. That was fun too. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Star Wars. So that's the flash speeder that we saw way back in the beginning in a very small model. Now it's in a very much larger and beautiful model. Right? More shape elements in it. Lots of shooting elements. A few. I actually think this shooter... It's nice to finally have one that works. That was a point where we had those was a flick fire missiles mm -hmm. where it was like those four studs long rods that you had to push your finger at and they would shoot and they would just drop out of the spaceship. So an additional Naboo, as if we didn't need those. Uh, the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium, complete with rebels and equipment. The Death Star duel. We're talking to some pretty iconic sets here, right? Mm -hmm. The Emperor looks really, really angry. Is he smiling there? He looks happy almost with his scarred face, but still smiling. And then he gets super angry about something. What could have set him off? Another Sith infiltrator. Wow. What is the number on this? I forgot there were that many of these these made. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, even and even if you start counting like the the micro models and mini models we've seen, I think we're up to six or seven of them, which will probably be corrected pretty soon in the comments. Uh, Imperial assault carrier means it doesn't resonate with me anywhere, but I think it's uh, could be one of those expanded universe thingies. <laughs> That's a lot of gray. That's true. Getting back to the Star Wars roots there. <laughs> gotta add that gray. You gotta use it somewhere, right? <laughs> we got a surplus of I gray. Mean, no other line is all gray, so you gotta do something with it. Yeah. Putting it back it's like Tetris. Tetris. We found That's it. Right. <laughs> this is how we found it. Oh. Uh, Ultra Agents? Anyone? Okay, I'll take a knee then. <laughs> <laughs> so, supposedly there's a uh, TIE Fighter UCS in here. A really, really nice one. Uh, but I don't think we are going to bother trying to dig it out. We'll just look at some of these instead. The First Order Special Forces tie. They look probably kind of devious with that red look, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's pretty evil. Evil accents. Red is good for that. Yeah. Pose X-Wing. Good in the orange and black color scheme. Plus, he, I think he takes out, like, what, 10 or 11 ties in that single. Uh, if it was a video game, he'd get, like, that bonus uh, that one score. That that just pants and follows him. I think he takes out 11 uh, ties, and he's pretty awesome. The First Order Transporter gives you a lot of uh, army and a lot of gray. But it looks like that, so what are you going to do? <clears throat> Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle. Let's not discuss the wings. Let's instead go to something way more interesting, which is the brand new aluminum falcon. See, 
and the dish is no longer round, so it's a new version. I love the classic, like, Imperial Pirates weapons that these guys have. That's so great. (laughs) Yeah, like these old black powder guns. (laughs) Stab! (laughs) And it shoots green laser. Next to the Millennium Falcon, of course. Never had it. So these are from the the newer series of Star Wars movies now from the last few years. Uh, what are your thoughts on those? I like them. Um, but that's maybe also because those movies, I really like them. So they really pulled me back in and made me buy quite a lot of the, the retail sets as well. Because suddenly the movies were talking to me and Rebels and, and Clone Wars really didn't. Um, so, But I think the sets really reflect the movies fairly mm-hmm. well. What else do we have? Oh, we haven't even touched upon these. Uh, is this what they uh, introduced? Because There's a lot of them here. A lot of the construction figures are, are popping up in, in Star Wars. Some of them more successful than others. Um, but I really like them. Especially the ones where we get the, the speeder bike and the scout trooper at a later point. Those are pretty awesome. Chewy. See if there's anything else here. We can slide out of here again without missing too much of it. Oh, we'll have so many comments on all the sets we missed. Like, why didn't you touch? Leave a comment below with your favorite set that we completely ignored. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a thousand comments right there. Like, why did you just walk past this and this set? And why didn't you stop at that and that year? Well, we wanted to, but it, this is something that just kind of happened. And if we missed your favorite Star Wars set, we're sorry. Honestly, sorry. Kim feels deeply for you. I do. I do. Because I know when I get back home from this, I'll sit down and go like, oh, why didn't we, we forgot that set or that set. And that set is definitely something we should have touched upon. But So now we're in 2016, so this stuff is, is very new. Yeah. I just got to check we can't see anything that we shouldn't. No, we did. So. No, but that's secretly what we're hoping for. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like, oh, the future of Star Wars sets. <laughs> John's ignoring what you're doing, just trying to zoom in on the other aisles. <laughs> So we get a Resistance X-Wing fighter. So this is very similar to uh, Kylo Ren's. Now we just get in the other color scheme, which is pretty pretty good because then you get you know the opportunity to to start expanding your your army of Star Wars mm-hmm. X-Wing fighters. Poe or Kylo Ren? Poe. I said Kylo Ren. Yep. Well, I wanted to save you from some more comments. <laughs> uh, this interview is over. <laughs> so Poe, uh, Poe, Poe is Poe's the evil guy, right? No, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it's been a, it's too far gone. <laughs> it's been a long week. Uh, uh, Poe. Yes. Poe, the the rebel. The hero. orange and black one. Yes. Yes. The one who had the football uh, droid. <laughs> the football droid. The BB-8. Yes. You you not our football. No, no, no. Our your soccer, our football. I'm fully aware it's not a soccer ball. Um Vader's tie, A Wing Starfighter. Pretty pumped up both of them. Beautiful models. Come the dark green look is always nice. Yeah. That's beautiful. And then with all the added designs and the stickers it's just nice. Though I'm fully aware that a lot of people don't like stickers. And Captain Rex's ATTE, which seems like a, I don't know, a walking circus to me. Like he, he turned it into a, a house or something. It looks like something from the Mortal Engines movie that's coming out, like a just a moving city. Yeah, something like that. There's something behind it as well. You gotta keep diving in. Oh, Rebel Combat Frigate from Rebels. Some nice elements used, but... Again, I didn't watch Rebels, so it doesn't really mean that much. Mm-hmm. A clone turbo tank. There's a few of those by now as well. Get it out here in the light so John can see oh. it. <laughs> you want to film this, John? Oh, he's the quiet cameraman. <laughs> Don't disturb him. He's, uh, he takes his craft very seriously. He, yeah. Well, okay, so he gets angry if we... <laughs> frowns at us and like, shh. 
Just pretend I'm not here. Okay. More buildable figures. K2SO. That's actually quite nice. The box doesn't do it much honor, but I build it and I have it at home and it's actually really, really nice and uh, quite poseable. I've seen some awesome pictures by toy photographers of, uh, of this particular one mm -hmm. online. Junazo and the Imperial Death Trooper. I think it's getting a little dark in some of the namings. Oh, someone turned on the lights. Star Scavenger. I like the old saw piece in the one minifix hand there. Yeah. I'm just a little scared that she has it. I don't know what she's going to use it for. And the encounter on Jakku. This is nice. This is this particular build right here is uh, it's really nice. Again, it, ha it adds a lot of color, right? Into a rather dark universe. What else do we have here? We already, this one is probably now misplaced because we tested it. It'll just go with the friends now. I think we took it there, didn't we? Someone in the comment, please let us know exactly <laughs> where we took it, and I promise I'll go back and put it in the right place. Um, Here's some more. But what do we have here? It's the ATST Walker and the Rebel Trooper. Baze Malbus. Who gets to be the Christmas guy this year? Chewie, oh, Chewie, Chewie has a festive Chewie's belt. White. Oh, look at that, Chewie. Covered in snow. Do you do the advent calendars every? I did. I, I, I used to, but not lately. It's, uh, I guess after so and so many years, it's it loses some of its uh, yay. Mm -hmm. Though I still like to, to look at them, but... You know, I still have a pile of sets at home that I haven't built, that I've bought. I'm like, oh, must get this diner and build it. And it just sits at home and laughs at me every day I go home. Um, tie Striker. That's nice. The designs are nice. This one, though. The Ripple U-Wing. Oh, I built this one, actually. And the wing do open. You can see that it has the the connection points right there. Oh, okay. And that expression I just did, like, uh, which was exactly how I felt about it when I when I got it, and then I uh, I brought it home and I built it, and it's actually surprisingly good. But that's also how I felt about, for example, Nexo Knights and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. I, as a fan myself, you know, initially were like, oh, that's weird. And then I brought home a couple of the sets and and built them, um, and I was actually surprised at how amazing they were and the techniques used and fantastic elements that the designers have put in there with a clear reference to, you know, castle and uh, classic space themes. So if you haven't, you should go out of your comfort zone every now and then and buy a set which is not Star Wars but something else mm -hmm. and just challenge yourself a bit and if you've never built friends make sure you do because those builds are awesome diversity is always helpful for Lego builders yeah plus there's uh, there's there's especially for friends and, and elves I think there's there's some pretty interesting techniques um, at their um, set designers see so the wings open up and go backwards and it becomes an massively huge plane when you do that it takes a lot of space and swooshes really well without coming apart that's always a plus with star wars yeah you gotta be able to swoosh the the, the fighters at least right? you gotta build them and then run around your house and pew pew with them otherwise it doesn't count you got a couple here small ones <laughs> smaller sets what is this? This, 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 the world famous. Careful, mind your face. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hello. There we go. 
There you go. Well famous. Not at all controversial. The Assault on Hoth. I've heard uh, less friendly versions of that name in the community. Um, and I think it mostly came down to a frustration on wanting a, a UCS set and getting a, a massive uh, play set mm -hmm. instead. And the frustrations and expectations not met for some. Uh, there's also some who really, really like it. And sometimes you just got to remember that for every angry comment on the internet, there's someone between 10 and 100 positive comments that are never said. Um, that's what I tell myself when I look at the YouTube comments every day. That's what we will be telling ourselves when we look at the YouTube comments for this walkthrough. Of just the, think of all the unsaid uh, positive comments. Think of all the happy people who didn't say anything. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. And now we know it's part of the Master Builder series. And then there's the new uh, Death Star, right? Mm -hmm. So this comes in as the other one leaves. And I think it was only a brief time that there was no available Death Star. Um, and they are very much alike. I can't say exactly what changed. I know the minifigure changed. But outside of that, I really don't know. Um, because in all honesty, I haven't built this one. And I actually never completed building the other one. So I'm not the right person to ask. They are big builds, take up a lot of space. So if any of you know exactly what the differences are design-wise, not minifigure-wise, feel free to drop that in the comments. Because then I'll know. Right. You can help educate Kim. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do. He needs all the help he can get. Yeah. I'm not that bright, so I need a lot of help. <laughs> a lot of hand handling. Uh, I think we did we touch did we, did we glance at those some we, some more micro fighters was, uh, additional hoth <laughs> seen a lot of hoth I don't think we did this is not the first iteration of the escape pod either we've seen a few of those um, this one has been there as well previously what else do we have here oh yeah. No, we haven't we haven't looked at these the battle on Takodana. Yeah, that short lady with the giant glasses. That's disturbing. It is. But a lot of nice elements and nice colors in this mm -hmm. set. For sure. And a bunch of the construction figures as well. Fastman and her friends. Battle packs. As we're getting used to. I'm pretty sure eventually Star Wars will be exclusively battle packs. Seems like it though, with a, <laughs> the, but it's again, it's up to two per half year. So we got a bunch of micro fighters to keep you going at the good price points. So mm -hmm. it's not all giant expensive sets, though there are a lot of them. 17. So this stuff I think is all what still available. So you can probably go out and buy all of this right now. Well, yeah, it's you can, and then some of it might be going out pretty soon. That's true. So jump on it while you can. Well, let's have a look at the what's in the Christmas counter. What is it? The, fo the, the football got a hat. <laughs> the football got a hat. The BB-8 with a hat. Is that the the Christmas joy of seventeen? We will <laughs> we will not show you what the eighteen one is though, All right? Just in case you bought it, we don't want to spoil anything. If you guys manage to get this out before Christmas, I can't say. That's that's for you to decide. <laughs> so what do we have in here? Which is Star Wars. We have the other side of the Death Star. Yes, apparently there's a Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Skiff, I can see. Admiral Thrawn becomes available. He looks like the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. Who's the... Yeah. Yando? I don't remember. You, you tell me. <laughs> that's that's for you to get corrected on in the comments. Battle on Scarif. Junasso dressing as a Imperial trooper. Pilot thingy. Another Y wing. Another nice version of that. Less white, more gray this time. It's the the, the, the art of greebling. The art of greebling, yeah. The, oh yeah. This is something that's been puzzling me for a while. Like, am I the only one who finds this slightly 
concerning like the the floating heads i am okay mm -hmm. good well then it's just me <laughs> it's, just, it's only you whose nightmares are haunted by the floating heads it's it's not nightmares haunting it's just uh concerning and these construction helmets that they're wearing but you can see the minifigures have become quite elaborate by now uh, there's print leg printing on most of them and a lot of torso printing a lot of different facial expressions a lot of them are dual faced so you can have flip them around you flip them around I, I personally i never have the time for that so but maybe kids do uh Galaxy, Friends, Disney, Speed Champions, Architecture, Star Wars, there it is. <sighs> the never ending story of the endless flow of Star Wars sets. So now we get a new version of Darth Vader's transformation. This is a way bigger version than the older one. There is one that we passed and uh, apparently didn't see. There is the smaller Republic fighter tank from the much larger version of uh, mm -hmm. earlier times. But still, I think it's a, it's a nice model. A dark red is always cool. Just temporarily store these here. We're gonna the Jakku Quad Jumper. It's a very boxy vehicle. It is. This is, um, this is the one where, where they're running for, to get out. Um, as they're attacked and he says what about that one and she yells no it's a piece of junk and they run towards this one and it gets blown up and you can actually blow it up that's one of the play features of the motors drop off and then you know the bucket will do and they run towards the Millennium Falcon mm, iconic I would say so yes <laughs> it looks like uh Thai-ish. It's very pointy. It is. It's a uh, tracker one, and it has the emperor, so it must mean something. But we are quickly moving on to the next one. A lot of details on this one and the and the stickers. The arrowhead, for obvious reasons. Oh, one of my favorites this time it's also one of my favorite scenes in the movie Rathar escape just just these minifigures are <laughs> awesome little target head men yeah <laughs> yes you, you could say that I was like, uh, but uh, yeah but that whole scene in the movie where the Rathars escape that was pretty great and you have those two different gangs that hand owes money <laughs> and stuff. It's just so typical Han Solo to yeah. get mixed up in those things and everything just goes south from there in a good way. <laughs> so it's just right. Until he dies, of course. Spoilers. Sorry. If you haven't seen the movie. I don't know. Have you seen the movie, John? Am I, did I spoil it for you? No. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. What do we have down here? One full step and there's more. <laughs> so the resistance bomber. There were some complaints from some people around this, but um, I got the chance to build it myself, and it's a it's a nice build. It's a lot of gray, but the blue kind of offsets it a bit. Yeah, offsets it a bit, and it's a it's a nice build. It, it reminded me of building the the B-wing fighter. Actually, there's some. Uh, DNA resemblance between those two. Just in case, the First Order also needs a Star Destroyer, so they also have one. They're packed Which in your we'll tight. look at in a minute when <laughs> <laughs> the Resistance transport part. I think they've gotten better at adding colors to add a little more stuff to it. So this has Finn Rose and BB-8 in it. The orange fin is nice. Yeah. Okay. And then there's this. <laughs> I, uh, at first glance, this looks 
weird. I agree. But again, this is one of those that I built and actually the functionality of, you know, moving this and the legs moving so it, it crawls forward is actually, you know, pretty awesome. Um, so the techniques and everything used in designing this entire under part of this uh, heavy scout is actually pretty awesome. So just for that, it's uh, it, it's worth it. It's very uh, inspirational, I think, in regards to adding um, to own designs. You just got to get past the janky look of like the legs. That yeah, yeah, because then it, it it's actually it's actually pretty awesome. It's um, I would say quite often Lego sets are not necessarily what they appear. Uh, it's hard to do them all the all the uh, you know represent them in a respective way when it's uh when it's you know a print a dead mm-hmm. print on a box it's it's very very difficult it's also always very very much different in in real life when you've had the experience of building it and you're holding it in your hands and it has all these functions or or abilities or nice techniques you used in the design of it or something it's uh, very hard to see from a, a look like this but this is the first order star destroyer and it's actually a pretty neat box and behind it, there's a friend of ours, which is an even bigger box. Uh, can we? Because there is some inside place. There we go. Just flip it around here. There you, go. <laughs> you see them better than I do, so so I'll let, I'll let you comment on them. I'll just describe them for you, and you can tell me what you thought. So the the whole panels open up, so you can play with the entire inside of it, and the minifigs walk around. There's different panels, uh, you know. There's a hand controls. Right, so you can fly it without yeah, there is, yeah. There is a someone's hand coming down and picking it up. Beam or something, a bent beam, yeah. And it has the supreme leader Snoke. Yeah, Snoke can uh, move up and down in inside there, and it's got a little hologram, right here. Oh, he can. That's awesome. Look at him go. <laughs> oh, this is the one you want. Look at that hologram. That is beautiful. They can, contr- they can, you know, run the world from there. Yeah. Something else. Yeah. I like when they do that. I know it, for display reasons, it doesn't really satisfy as much. But for kids who want to fly this thing around in their living room, it's perfect having a handle that you can grab onto and without the whole thing coming apart and dropping to the floor. Uh, Actually add some playability to it. Yeah, that's right. Long set. What is this? Oh. Now this is Kylo Ren's so fighter. So this is Poe's TIE fighter. <laughs> Kylo Ren's TIE fighter. I prefer Kylo when he wears his helmet. He's, uh, he's, you know, he's way more... You don't find his manly look <laughs> attractive? No. No. I want it. The helmet has a nice sound, right? It's like, it does. You don't want to look at Vader without his helmet either. And he just sounds so much more devious when he's wearing the helmet. But I understand why not. But still, just put on the helmet. Listen, nobody cares how you look. You're kind of in. It's supposed to be evil. Uh oh. I think that's. I think that slid in there. It was tight. It was. It was that tight. Yeah, it was. like a librarian here. you got to put everything back in its right spot. Tetris. Du, 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 du. Points. What else do we have? Here's some. Well, it's actually this giant oh, walker yeah. right there we missed out on. First order heavy assault walker. Heavy assault walker. It's, Have, not an, it's not an AT-AT anymore. Now it's a heavy assault. Gun. That's right. It looks completely different. And this is uh, this is beautiful. It's a fantastic build. Have you seen some of the the massive Star Wars mocks that builders have incorporated giant versions of this into recently? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. At, uh, at Brick Fair, there were some pretty cool models right. there, and just walking around, um, for example, over at what was they Rebel Luck, mm-hmm. and the stuff they put on display was pretty amazing. Rich Boy J, Brick Wiz, shout out. <laughs> some, of our, some of our favorite Star Wars YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, the, there were some, some pretty awesome things over there. Um, Battle of Kate, I think it was also there. Mm-hmm. So they, yeah, 
pretty skilled builders around doing doing amazing Star Wars displays. We see you. <laughs> Kim appreciates you. I appreciate you. I'm just too, you know, I'm just scared of talking to you because you're so good and popular. What is this? This is Django Fett. The Jedi Starfighter with hyperdrive. So this is the red one. We earlier had, we had the blue one, right? Mm-hmm. This is the one I meant. That's yeah, it's is the it, down on your it is, it is. Okay. <laughs> so this is my favorite. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? There you go. This is actually one of my favorite construction sets. I think this just nails what uh, what we can achieve because I won't say what construction can achieve because you have to go to preferably one of the US conventions and look up BC Power and Bionilock and their stuff there and then you'll see what the fan community can do with construction but from our end this is uh, pretty darn close to CD as we said in the 90s I want this and I want several of them and I want to hang them around my garden so it looks like they're flying but <laughs> luckily the wife disagrees she's my uh, reality check <laughs> she's your rock she really keeps you grounded she is <laughs> she's fantastic she's everything that keeps me sane <laughs> <laughs> that is good. They're just plummeting and just do the crazy stuff all the time. She's the she's the reality check. They go, like, I think that's a bad idea. And I go, no, that's a great idea. And she says, I think that's a bad idea because... And I go, oh, yeah. We'll release another series with you giving relationship advice as a Lego fan. Uh, yes, well, <laughs> just first of all, find a wife or a man um, who appreciates who you are and is okay with living with you and your quirks. And then you've gotten a long way. Um, after that, it's all compromising. Like, but there's a, there's a few, e e you know, easy knobs to turn. For example, never ever question what your partner buys. If they bring home an expensive jacket, praise it. Like, that's a beautiful jacket. $800, totally worth it. <laughs> totally worth it. I think you should go buy one more if it, if you really like them that much because one day they might be sold out and you'd need another one. You could always put one in the attic and just use it when that happens or if they bring home shoes or something and they go, like, do you think I have too many shoes? No. I think you don't have nearly enough shoes. I think you need to buy more shoes. Um, <clears throat> those kind of things, you know, they give you some leeway when you bring home a Millennium Falcon and they go like, what is this? It's a Millennium Falcon. How much is it? $800. And they're like, what? I praised your jacket. And then they have to, you know. Wow. There you go, boys and girls. That's spoken like a man with a lot of experience in this area in life. Uh, disclaimer, it might not always work. <laughs> it's not 100% foolproof. No, no, not always. It all depends on, on a lot of uh, factors. Next shelf? Okay, I think we should. Oh, now we're into this year. End of, end of 17, beginning of 18. Why is, why is it so empty? Maybe it hasn't all been stored yet. Yeah. Is there any Star Wars in here at all? There is one. Oh. <laughs> yes. And it's upside down. Uh, but it's too heavy and I'm too tired, I think. Uh, and you've all seen this numerous times. This is... <sighs> We're peaking, I think. I, uh, it can't get any better than this one. It is incredible. For those who watched the 24-hour live stream this year, we were building this set. Uh, it was you built very two fun. You of them at the same time, right? Yes. Did you I, one, one on each hand. Because I didn't get to see... Uh, uh, no. So Boone finished his, and I did not get anywhere near finishing mine. But I did finish it later. Okay. Yeah. Because I wanted to do the complete build. And it's it's fantastic. It's massive. The weight of it is the craziest thing. Like, uh, like Lego models just don't normally weigh that much. How much is the... With the box, I think it's what twenty six pounds, twenty eight pounds right or something. About. I think that's right about. Even when they like design special wheels and a, and a handle for it. So if you bought it in brand retail stores, they have like this stick on wheels that you could put on, uh, made out of uh, cardboard, I think it is, and a handle that you can attach to it as well. So you can just reel it off like a cart when you go home instead of lifting it. Um, yeah, I haven't built it yet, but it is beautiful but again we have some pretty awesome things in store for you for the future year oh. so this is when we just transition nicely into the future products discussion 
Well, you know very well I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny what comes in the future, and I cannot comment on it. But I uh, let's just say I think you and I can be both pretty certain that there will be more Star Wars sets to come. Pretty awesome ones too as well. You will be fans will be happy, and some fans will be disappointed. <laughs> okay, then. That's all you can say. <laughs> Which we try to deliver, right? But every now and then, whenever we do something, it's when you have such a vast community as Lego fans, and then you uh, even add another fandom like Star Wars on top of it, you can never get it 100% right. There's no chance because everyone have their own opinion on what 100% success is. So no matter what we try to do, we can't satisfy everyone. Right? We, we make a playset. We're going to disappoint those who want to display or a, a, a mock, so to say, something on, on mock level of quality. Um, but we're going to make the kids happy who want a playset. Right? When the kids, uh, some kids out there who still want an A-wing, and we've seen quite a few A-wings, but every time we make something again, we will disappoint some of those who's been around for long enough to already have it. Um, not saying that we're doing any re-releases next year or, or remakes of any previous Star Wars sets, but we can never fully satisfy everyone. But we try. Yeah, that's true. I think we you almost succeeded with this one, right? I think, so. I, I think you came very close. Yeah. And the first thing, one of the first things that happened after this one was announced and shown and everything was that I saw one who wrote a comment saying, okay, so now you've done this twice. When are we getting that at at in the same scale? I don't know. <laughs> Build it yourself. Build it yourself. Uh, if you want the sand crawl on same scale, Marshall Banana did an awesome one at some point, which has, what, 15,000 pieces or something? It's out there on the internet. You can Google it. That's That's pretty amazing. So for everyone watching, that has been... Star Wars from 1999 to today with our in-house Star Wars expert and all-around awesome Lego fan, Kim. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I noticed it down here. We should mention this since we've gotten distracted throughout the, the video anyway with other sets. No. The Billund Airport set, which I think a lot of people might not realize this exists, but since we're in Billund, we'll end with this set as well. Yeah, but why is this here? Is this? Oh, I think this is because this is the new version. So for collectors, it gets even worse now because this is the new version of the first version of the Billund Airport. So there was one made for the Billund Airport. Um, and the story is something like one of the employees there made of it. And then it turned into a Lego set and we had a designer work on it at Lego. It became a set and now there's a new version, which is this one. Um, and it's only available at the Billund Airport, at the Lego store there. Only available at the Billund Airport. So, yeah, yeah. pro tip, if you're ever flying, you have to be flying out, out of Billund, right? You can't. It's not even if you arrive. I think you have to be flying out of Billund to be able to do it. I think that if you... Someone mentioned at some point, and I haven't checked for obvious reasons since I fly out of Billund, um, that if you use the online shop, you can actually pre-order this so that when you land and pick up your luggage, you can go to, I think it's the odd luggage part, uh, place, and then you can pick up... Oh your order from the lego shop there so if you prepay pre-order um it will be there in a bag waiting for you with the name on it i cannot guarantee that it is so but i heard a fan say that he did it traveling into billing at some point worth looking into then but yeah thank you so much once again kim this i have no idea how long we've been going for but this has been fantastic it's been and i really appreciate time. your insight because uh you know you know much more about the sets than i do and you've been a part of the community for much longer so it's really good to get all that insight over the years so thank you sorry for all the sets that we missed <laughs> sorry for those of you who wanted to see your favorite set and we True. failed uh it was john he kept pushing us <laughs> forward he, he was the one who turned out the lights as well that's right blame it on the cameraman that's, that's the easiest thing to do. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this more in-depth look at Star Wars and the archive here. Make sure to check out our other archive videos on the channel as well, where we go through more general themes uh, over the years. We've done a number of them now, and so if you enjoyed this, definitely check those out. Thanks so much for watching. We're just going back. We're, we've <laughs> gone back. <laughs> we've gone back. <laughs> we've gone back. There was a few we missed, and we just couldn't leave them. So like this is the first iteration of the Slave 1. And... Uh, when it came out, I felt this was the most beautiful ship I've ever seen because it's Slave One. I agree that now the new the newer versions are probably 
a little better. But this one had it all. It had Boba Fett, it had the Carbonite Han Solo, and it had a Slave One. Look at that it exploded view. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of a crazy view, isn't it? And some some alternatives that you could build. And as you can see, this is uh, this is the initial Lego Star Wars design that was also featured on the 10th anniversary boxes. Mm -hmm. um, and we also mentioned at some point that there are different versions of the escape pod, the droid escape. And as you can see, this started out as a very small set. This is barely kept together by. Uh, by a bunch of tiles and of course we also had we can't forget the first UCS sets and these are beautiful these are also the ones that stand out if you touch it says ultimate collector series that is beautiful uh, 7181 I'll be correcting my uh, myself here um, the tie interceptor black and blue beautiful ship and we have the first X-wing right same I love that box design, box, yeah. box, like Ultimate Collector Series, and all the beautiful build. And then we have, you know, the first Millennium Falcon, which is absolutely hideous. Oh my goodness, that's so bad. <laughs> by by today's standards. But I would say back then, uh, this was the Millennium Falcon. You have the four giant saucer elements. I mean, right? I guess you, you took what you got, but Yeah, man, yeah, because wow. this, this was pretty mind-blowing at the time, right? <laughs> you got to compare it to something like this. <laughs> right. Then it is pretty mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there's a few things that, that makes you go, huh? Like, for example, this giant plate right, right. here. It just <laughs> makes very little sense. But you got a fair collection of minifigures. Yeah. And you got the Millennium Falcon. We... Uh, at that point in time, I didn't think this was poorly designed. This was a retail set. This was classic Lego system. And this was uh, a UCS. And they, you it's know. true. You have to contextualize it, don't you? Yeah. You, have to, you have to not look at it from our perspective. As a, as a UCS set, try and lifting this one and you're going like, <laughs> it's oh, very light, goodness. isn't it, right? You so, expected to have some heft. Yeah. Maybe someone took out some of the elements. <laughs> Um, what else do we have in this in this wave that we missed and we had to go back to? So there's a battle droid carrier. Look at this. This is how small you actually can make an ATST, and Chewie is riding it. Not even sure there's anyone else than Chewie in there. It's the same thing with the, the yeah, like it, taking apart. <laughs> yeah, it blows up. I don't know. It's like, and, and it's funny though because a lot of people talk to this uh, these days, right? It's everything about construct deconstruct, reconstruct. So you would build a set, then you would, Chewie would deconstruct it, and you can reconstruct it as, into these alternative models. So back then we still had the the alternative suggestions on the boxes. No instructions though, but suggestions for what you could do instead. What, how, how do we miss all these things? TIE fighter. I think this whole pile escaped us earlier. Yeah, it did. The Imperial shuttle. Well, <laughs> we've only seen about a dozen of those. A lot of gray, right? Now it's, it's all white when you see them. This is definitely not what we're looking for. There it is. Oh, oh that's the one you have to go a, back. What's his junkyard? This is the one that ended up costing me tons of money to get that weird full molded <laughs> what to. I paid. I actually still have this Minden box. The box is all mashed up and stuff, but the seals are there. And I'm probably never going to build it just as a constant, everlasting reminder. Of always, if there's a set you want, get it now. It's true. But don't get more sets than you need. I'll leave the decision on what you need <laughs> to yourself. Is that Zibalba in the back of that pod racer? Over there? I think so. And look at the boxy, like this is just crazy. Those red tire pieces are cool. I like the green one that's trashed on the side more. <laughs> oh well. Well, I'm glad we came back and looked at Yeah, these. I looked at yes. the, the real, the initial yes. UCS. And, uh, and this is the earlier stuff anyway, you know. Yeah, we had to set that right, otherwise comments would have floored us, I guess. <laughs> that just... <laughs> I freeze, remember those. So this was, freeze and chill. I had some of those growing up. Age six to nine? Mm-hmm. All right, then. I'm not going to ask you your age and compare it to my age. <laughs> Let's start sharing ages, Kim. Let's not. <laughs> I already had trouble getting up. Cool. 
There we go. So we uh, corrected the record on some of those for you. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs>